<laughs> um, so prior to uh, getting involved with we community i was a sales consultant i had a sales consulting firm so for about 10 years i would go into corporations you know how their scripts are really long and wordy and legally and no one understands what it means it's like a credit card application right well, I would turn them from normal, from their legalese into normal English, and then I would get a lawyer to approve it. I didn't understand the behind the scenes side of it, the legality of it. I just knew certain words work better for selling stuff than other ones. Okay. So for short is, I became a natural gas broker, and that's where you work for, basically it's, it's going door to door and you're doing contracts with people at the door. We were regulated by the Public Utility Board. And mm -hmm. what that means is basically if anyone lied as a corporate agent going to someone's door, we didn't identify our name, badge number, that it was voluntary, our office number, where our head office was, everything they needed. So if we did anything dishonest, we'd be fully liable. Mm -hmm. If anyone didn't do the job correctly, it was 14 years in prison and wow. up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. And I watched people get taken out for that over seven years as a regional manager for the province of Manitoba under the public utility board. So when I found out that governments are a corporation and it's the same type of security interest contracts that we would do at the door as a broker, mm -hmm. and then I would reflect and be like, well, police don't identify themselves. They're sure as heck not giving you their first and last name, never mind a badge number a lot of time. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, one sec, so sorry. Mm -hmm. In corporate contracting, from my sales background, the number one thing you learn is you can't force people to contract. If I use any aggression as a salesman to get you to sign my contract for a sale, it's null and void. If I lie to you, it's null and void. If I don't identify myself, it's null and void. If I use any kind of tactic to mislead you, to cause you harm, null and void, and I'm, I'm getting brought up on charges of fraud, right? Also through my life, I ran a bunch of businesses, and in business, at least the way I was taught it growing up, it's supposed to be mutually beneficial, ideally, and ideal sure. entrepreneurialism. You provide something of value, they pay you for it, you each walk away with mutual benefit, and then you'll do business again. Yes. As I got older, and I was trained by all these corporations, most of them are crooked as all F. And then when I found out that legality isn't even law, legality is corporate rules given force of law only with a valid contract, um, it just blew me away. So the long story short is, uh, I didn't want to go to jail for pot, I studied my ass off for a year. I smoked a lot of weed, watched a lot of experts, and with my own experience in contract law, I knew what was true and what wasn't based on what I could or couldn't do. So I got together with three friends. We founded a society, three witnesses. A society is just three or more people joining mutual consent for a common goal. It could be the I Love Puppy Society, whatever you want. And uh, from then, it's just about the one law, which is not to cause harm to the life, liberty, property, or rights of others. And as long as you don't do that, no fraud and contract, that's the only actual law on earth. Everything else is due process, notice an opportunity to respond. And there's a way that you have to do it because if I give you an order, I'm violating your rights. Everything has to be an offer. And mm -hmm. to cure a right off of an equal, you have to have two letters that establish the mutual understanding and then the claim of right that follows those. So that three letter process is due process, that is the judgment, it replaces any system of legality trying to oversee anything. And then the next five years, I just went out and proved it. Uh, we have five years of live video, a lot of it's ugly video and the audio is horrible and sometimes I'm swearing in it so people judge that a little bit. <laughs> um, but we proved toe to toe with every department that this works. Uh, even to the point I've advocated for people and they've gone and done UCC liens against agents. Um, so we have a complete package at this point. We got taught by the indigenous communities in Manitoba how to do community courts that the legal system recognizes. Oh, nice. Yeah, so very nice. As soon as you have your own sovereign law intact, which is just a three-letter process, and we did all the work for you, so we have the templates, and I'm giving them all to you, Jackie, for free. I'm giving you all the codes access to everything we have, so you can do a full independent review if we're full of it. Tell everyone. No, it uh, sounds and great. And yeah, it sounds great. You know, and also anyone that you want to share it with, if you guys have things that you see through insights that we don't have yet, by all means, we're happy to improve. Uh, but, but the core process that people needed there, how to get bank accounts as a sovereign, all of it. So we, we've done it for 11 years. We've never been challenged by the legal system directly. They've attacked me personally a lot, uh, but our society undefeated in 11 years. And even me personally, I've never gone to jail for any of this. A few times I've been arrested briefly. I'm out in a few days. And I think the worst I got was a fine that I never had. Yeah. 
Yeah. So really long story. So basically, we were seeing a lot of abuse. We decided to found a society of people we knew and trusted uh, because right now the government or what people are calling the government is a corporation, but it's all strangers. We all tell our kids, don't talk to strangers. Well, that's who's governing us. So regardless of COVID, regardless of lockdown, regardless of any of that, um, it's really a matter of understanding corporate contracting and then reserving your rights in it. And as long as you do that, you can use the legal system with all rights reserved, be under private law. And if you get violated, you can use private law fee schedules then to bill and, and hold those agents accountable. And you don't go to court or sue. It's just noticing them in default and then curing it and then doing a contract release. So it kind of sounds like you were in the right place at the right time. I mean, learning what you learned really helped for you to apply it in, the, in, in what we're saying is the corporate state world. So tell me a little bit more about your, um, your community court, because that's super exciting. We're doing one too, but we're kind of keeping it more for our own stuff right now, you know, to keep us out of the courts. But so what kind of successes have you had? How have you been using it? Well, basically, at this point, it's something we've learned. I've issued judicial judgment, basically, under my own authority and under our society law, convicting all legal agents of being guilty of crimes against all mankind. As mm -hmm. soon as you call someone a human, you're saying they're a soulless beast. Hue means no soul. Mm -hmm. So they're reducing you to a beast, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, the, main, the, the people who taught us are the Inanu community courts. They're in Winnipeg and they're actually under indigenous sovereignty, but they're mm -hmm. operating in the law courts corporate building. So, okay. so they're, they're, at, they're correct to process in it indigenously. Uh, I believe it's the Cree Nation. David Harper of the Cree Nation is the one who invited us. Mm -hmm. And he actually teaches at the government building there on indigenous rights. Again, not a government, it's a corporation. I, I, I get mad at myself whenever I call them a government because it's an insult. Government. And <laughs> anyone who wants the, the case law not, on that is clear field doctrine case law is mm -hmm. the u.s supreme court case law that proves as soon as you go corporate you cannot be a government anything corporate is limited liability commercially you have to be fully liable under oath or attestation upon penalty of perjury at all times to be a real government and these corporations aren't and that's the rights abuse that i'm getting passionate about and i'm, I'm going to backtrack and let you ask more questions because i'm getting ahead of myself no, but no, that's cool. every time a store tells you to stop they give you an order instead of asking you that is a rights violation that is billable they are personally liable for willful negligence which is equal to fraud removed to their insurance bond and if you record it they can absolutely be billed and leaned and it's about 300 bucks to get a private investigator to get you a home address 700 bucks for the leap <laughs> and you can always put their information public if there's someone that's doing criminal stuff and that's where as soon as they commit a criminal act you have no obligation to a fraud you have no obligation to anything criminal and that's where long run uh, communities need to start forming private security set up correct a process within legal and lawful standards, hire sheriffs to go arrest the agents that are doing the bad things. There are ways you can ignite the legal system against itself, and then you can also use private law exterior to that. And we'll talk more about that as we go. Yeah, so that, so it's interesting you would say that, because the biggest problem has always been enforcement. Um, you know, we can come up with all kinds of, you know, orders, judgments, whatever, but actually getting it enforced in their system has always been kind of difficult. Um, so you mentioned private security or something similar. So I don't have you heard of Detroit Threat Management? Are you familiar with them? Uh, I'm not familiar with them specifically, no. You might want to look them up. They are awesome. I've, I've met and I, Dale, his name's Dale. I've met Dale a couple of times and he's from, again, Detroit Threat Management. Okay. Really okay. awesome organization. They do private policing, if you want to call it private policing. I would call it, um, they're, they're actually trained to diffuse situations that do so much better than the police. Is it similar to like a, a cop watch kind of thing where they, they but, but they actually interact, they actually advocate. They them. actually oh. interact. They, yeah, they like, so they, they're hired by private people and it's actually, I, I'm trying to remember how much it was. I don't know if art's on here. Um, but we actually spoke to him and it's actually not that much like for a household. I want to say like maybe, um, a couple of hundred a year or something. So Fair families enough. get together and hire them yeah. to police their area. And they're so much better than the police. For sure. One thing that I will say that we did do is when we were first starting Peacemaker Society, I did do an advocate patrol program. Uh, okay. I actually spoke at the International Cop Watch Conference about it. And again, guys, I do smoke weed. It might take me a minute to have the right point boot up sometimes. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I, we, we recorded, I witnessed 
uh, them giving orders to homeless people. They couldn't sleep under a tree. I would go in between, advocate, bill the agent, all of that. I actually wound up getting assaulted by a downtown biz member, but we had it all recorded. He admitted to being a Nazi. We played it at the Cop Watch conference, and then he wound up assaulting me three days after. I wound up in jail for 10 days. Oh, my God. Face back, um, and we tussled for a bit, but uh, nothing really came of it, aside from going to court for a couple of years and then fine. But that was it. And wow. I didn't pay the fine. Um, but uh, the long story short is it's really successful. Just obviously don't get physically involved. If, especially if you're on your own. Um, if it gets to the point where we're bigger in that, my, my long-term goal would be when there's protests or something like that and you have police all lined up ready to kick the crap at everyone and all this, all the civilians or, or citizens sitting there protesting but unarmed, it'd mm -hmm. be really nice if there were a peace force in between the two that were in full riot gear, not armed with any guns or anything like that, but just to physically block the people getting the crap kicked out of them who aren't equipped to deal with that and they're maybe a little naive or 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 just willing to pay the price to voice their opinion um but it shouldn't have to be that way and then the other thing i'll say is is just private security has been around for a long time the key is unregistered unincorporated mm -hmm. that's the key to peacemaker society that makes us different than a lot of other things out there is we've retained unregistered unincorporated and we've gotten every level of the legal system to recognize that we are valid even in court on the record we were able to be under our own oath and the judge acknowledged our jurisdiction Wow. And that's transcripts cool. on peacemakersociety.org. Anyone can go there. That, that, that is awesome. So what kind of cases do you help people with? All kinds, cr criminal and civil law? Excellent question. Basically, what I do is I teach people how to found their own society. Until okay. you've done your own claim of right and founded your own society, you're a contract of service under the corporation pretending to be your government, whether it's okay. England, Canada, whatever. So it's like when you join the army, they dictate your rights and they dictate your pay and it's not very much. So okay. when you go private law, now for me, I have a million dollar fee schedule, orders equal bills. Because I've claimed my equality, if anyone treats me in a reduced capacity, especially a corporation that I don't have contract with, they're immediately liable for my fee schedule. I notice them, I record it, they continue, I bill them, that's it. Uh, to date, I haven't leaned them personally because I want to get them all. My, my goal is to take down whole departments. I want to take down the police. I want to take down all the prosecutors. The Law Society is a corporation. Um, me saying these things isn't out there. I've been interrogated for six hours by police when this was early on. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't carry guns myself. I'm half French and English. I'm too crazy to have firearms. I would get shot or someone get shot or I'd put out or whatever. Um, but I believe <laughs> in people's right to bear arms. Right, and not so much from the perspective of, of hunting deer, but through history, that's what's protected people from the tyranny of, of dictators posing as government, you know, doing unlawful acts to them. It's, it's so, so the key is just really unregistered, unincorporated, and if uh -huh. you set up that way, you can mirror it the way it is in the legal system. You can even use the same titles, but as long as it's unregistered, unincorporated, it's called adverse possession in Black's law. It's enjoyment of real property under claim of right. And it says in the defense of property in the Criminal Code of Canada, you and anyone employed by you is not criminally liable for using any amount of force as long as it's equal to defend that possession of property. And your rights are your property. Your physical body is your property. Your labor is your property. Your time is your property. And I'm going to shush and let you take the reins again because I got to get going. So. It's so funny that you said about, you know, not having a gun that someone would have got shot because I got to admit, that, um, I think it was maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, I did see a little video that you put out you were topless and you were ranting and raving and, and kind of cussing. Now, if I did that, I, the, the video would be pulled down real quick too, but I remember, <laughs> I remember the video did real quickly. <laughs> I, I actually took that one down. I recognize okay. what's the right way to put the message across. I talked with my wife and she's like, yes, <laughs> no, it's okay. But that's so I, I re-recorded a, a, a more appropriate video, but it was when the lockdown was first happening and, and the reason uh -huh. it picked out like that is because this is what Hitler did. Like, no, yeah. still, this is what, Stalin did. And, and I'm, I'm a peaceful Saskatchewan boy. Like, I'll, I'll get in a street fight if it takes it. I can stop all that tanks. I live in Canada. I'm a wuss like that. Like, I'm not ready for that stuff. If it came down to it, I'd be the first to run out and, and join if, it, if we had to. But the pen is mightier than the sword. If you use process correctly, you can beat them that way. And the reason I'm around 11 years later is because I advocate peace first. Until someone's hitting me, then I'll defend myself. But I don't start the fight, you know. And, and I grew up being pretty tough. So, I can take a lot without having to get too crazy, but I use strong words because 11 years ago when I founded the society, I can't punch anyone anymore. 
so so <laughs> I can't when I was when I would fight back in the day I'd be calm I wouldn't yell anything but I'm not allowed to do that anymore so now I use my words to try and emotionally reach people in a way that for some people <laughs> it's <a> quick snack <laughs> would be more effective but that would be unlawful and that's why since my oath I can't do that and that's where anyone who fears this process the more crazy someone is, not that I'm crazy, but if someone were crazy, <laughs> it binds them to a no harm standard and all their power comes from not causing harm. Yes. I earn my living privately. I pay no tax for 11 yes. years. I don't, and I lecture, but I do my taxes every year, but I have no taxable income because it's all under my society. Mm -hmm. and, and I joke with them about it, that it's a big joke. Um, yes. So I'm not giving up my freedom and my wealth and my future and my law to go punch someone in the head over something stupid. So, As well, 15 years ago, sure. <laughs> Someone's asked in the chat, what about the present orders of social distancing and no gathering above 10 people? Is that what you have where you're at? Um, they, they do have things where you're, I think it's and not supposed to be over five right now, I think is where they're at right now. But I remind everywhere I go, I have a little camera on me and I turn it on when I go into any stores and anyone who tells me to do anything, I remind them everything corporate is voluntary. And if you give me an order, I'm billing you. And I literally, I, I, this is our society. We have this, I got these made for our people when they go out and collect oh, nice. signatures okay. and whatever, but it defines natural law. I have a digital paper with this on it that I'll show you later. So, huh. um, but, but if anyone challenges me, I whip this out, that's notice, I'm recording it. They don't comply, <laughs> they just made me a million bucks and I love money. Now, with that said, you're probably not gonna get paid on most liens, but what you do is you bankrupt that agent, you lien their insurance bonds so they're no longer bondable because they've been liened for fraud. And my understanding is from a guy named Sean Lane in the States that you can even lean the United Nations because they're who underwrites the liability of the agents in the various countries that have signed on to it. Um, but the, the client that I had, I issued the guilty statement as a chief justice. He served that and then he followed it up and did the full UCC lien. So I do have a full process finished on that, even though I didn't do the full process myself. So, you know, I, when I look around, I see a lot of, not so much societies, but associations have a lot of power. So for instance, the Department of Motor Vehicles started out as, an, as a, 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 tri a travel association, or you got the Association of Sheriffs, Association of Secretaries of State. What about an association of societies so that we can have, you know, each of us has our own sovereignty with our own society, but at the same time we have unity in numbers, so. And that's exactly what Peacemaker Society is set up to be. We're not here to actually, the reason no one's really a member is because I won't let anyone join. If you join my society and you don't know your rights, you're going to go do something that gets them, you know, like how you said when you got arrested, they re-entered you into the system. Most people yes. don't know how to read and serve rights when they're going through that. So basically, you would undo what I gave you with my jurisdiction with the stroke of a pen without re it. The other thing is then I got to govern your life. And quite frankly, I love my life. I don't want everyone's problems all day. That's part of why I, I sometimes trip out a little bit when people don't listen or I get a little curt or a little rude. I'm busy applying the solutions all day, every day. I know they work. It's not really debatable. It's just up to you how you want to take and apply it to your life. So we set up our templates to be completely neutral in law and religion. They strictly outline the oath right now is just not to cause harm to life, liberty, property, or rights, and no fraud and contract. That's the oath to start your own society, and you can add whatever you want to it, mm -hmm. as long as there's no harm standard. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you do something that's the harm standard, then you're going to be liable regardless of your own jurisdiction. And that's... So do you believe that less is more? Like you made that really simple, and I'm, I'm of the belief that less is more. The less you write, the less of a... Um, a corner you kind of write for yourself so what I will say is as a teaching tool simpler is for sure better um, in, in our own like our society oath is quite a bit wordier I have in their brain being my brother and sister's keeper a keeper of peace by exercise okay. rights I'm you know the whole, the whole thing it, it's, it's been a little while since I've read it I, I should be able to rattle it off a little better but uh, I signed it 11 years ago and I smoke a lot of pot but I, I honor it every day uh, within that just in that I don't cause harm and uh, but yeah simpler if you truly understand something really well, you should be able to explain it simply. And that's always been the truth. I find, I find the people that master something the best can just nail it. Like do process, not notice an opportunity to respond. Notice an opportunity, that's it. That's the best way I ever heard it. Like That's that's all it is. I know people expect some, you know, I, I, I didn't get due process and then you ask them what is due process and, and they think it's something totally different. But guys that's all it is and then no, the other thing i can ask a lot is where you go to register your sovereignty if you register <laughs> a spy, you're under someone else's system you want to record your own title record your own society and that's the notice of understanding and intent and claim of right the three letters uh which we have in there. 
um, I actually so somebody else has asked the question under what circumstances can a business make you leave if they don't want you in the place i kind of look at that the opposite if they don't want me there i'm certainly not going to be spending my money there and that's how you can show them well, that they're making pretty, wrong pretty much my my answer to that is i just had a situation at the canada post in like a shopper's drug mart it was it was a rexall pharma plus let's get the company right um and uh, i was in there and uh, i was sending some mail i was paying with cash they're trying to limit that now but cash is privacy and until they stop printing it until they change the rule that it's not legal tender i will insist on paying with cash um and um the lady started lecturing me when she was giving my change back i informed her i didn't want her opinion she's not a legal expert i mean i appreciate that's how you feel but david here's my card i'm chief justice maybe go check out what we're talking about uh she called her manager because she didn't appreciate it. i threw a card at her all of a sudden security was beside me they're telling me get out of the floor <laughs> and i just said i and and this is what i tell anyone uh if you have not committed an indictable offense no one has the right to tell you squat and when you go into a store it's public property it is not a well, security guard who has an appointment where they have your name and they, they you're qualified but if they if you can just walk in you are not bound to their rules whatsoever you're bound to no harm standard. So if someone gives you an order and you haven't caused harm, once you claim your rights, they're liable for your fee schedule. You could go try and sue as a citizen, but lawyers are gonna take all the money. The reason I like a fee schedule, it's like a roofer coming to your house. As Soon as you give the order, you're liable for the bill. He bills you, you don't pay it, he leans your property, that's it. That's why a sovereign fee schedule has the ultimate power because you bill, you lien, notice of default, notice of non-response, and as long as you cure that properly, you don't need a judge in a court. You just take that, file it with the proper UCC or in Canada PPSA, um, and then you got them, and that's it. You know. And then also, I love promoting publicly anything criminal that they're doing. Uh -huh. Usually, yeah. agents don't like you shining a big light on their life. They do it to me all the time. That's why I use that tactic on them right back. So. Yeah, absolutely. So my son went into a store, Chipotle. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah. Okay, so he went into Chipotle, and he happened to be standing behind a very tall officer and it was pretty funny so the the woman tells him the woman behind the the, the um, counter says you can't come in here without a mask so everyone here i don't know if you've seen the spaghetti westerns when the guy looks <laughs> so they all look at my son he looks at the cop mm -hmm. she lo he looks at they're all like doing this whole looking thing you know it's like the the big spaghetti westerns you know showdown and then all of a sudden the cop picks up his stuff and leaves and she goes oh <laughs> and serves my kids <laughs> sure. no that's wonderful yeah basically if they ask you that's within their rights when they order you that isn't and that's what we we just had the same thing we were in yeah. state of brothers they wanted us to wear one and we said no we don't want to wear one and um it was kind of funny because we we did tick off one of their patrons and he went to go talk to the manager and she said i cannot i'm not going to tell him to not shop here for sure and, yeah, and, and that's the other thing. Like even the other night, we went to order food in just for dinner, like two nights ago. And Applebee's was where we were going to order from, and they will only accept credit card now. So I let them know, I'm like, well, I guess we're not going to be shopping at Applebee's, and that's a violation of people's privacy, and you're liable. In accounting rules and law, you cannot refuse payment. You can't refuse cash. cash. Yeah, <laughs> so, so they're actually <laughs> violating a law like under land warfare rules. If you yes. so much as put sanctions on someone's right to travel or anything, that is an act of war, period. So there is an act of war by corporations pretending to be government fraudulently against the rights of all mankind and womankind and their war criminals. And that's where our litigation document, I've already convicted them because I've interacted for 10 years. I have a quarter record going back 11 years with every single department where they've been noticed and we have the ability. And now it's just a matter of setting people up locally to form the local community courts. It's kind of like how Hillary Clinton's foundation is, has that the judicial panel. That's uh -huh. what we need to do. One of those, but Ralph Nader style for, for okay. safety stuff, right? And as we do that, we get a jury of 12 sovereigns together that understand mm -hmm. sovereign law, that have their sovereignty intact. And that is way more of a binding decision than anything a legal court can do. You have to remember legal courts are administrative adjudicators. They are not a chief justice. They are not under any oath of actual mm -hmm. law. They're a flagrant fraud and criminal period. Period. They shall be arrested. Every single politician should be on a wanted poster, like in the Wild West. Yeah. Yeah, and again, within correct process, as you know, we'll use legal and lawful process because legal 
has to operate to lawful standard. And it, whenever it doesn't, that agent is personally liable for willful negligence. And again, you record it, you bill. And that's why I scare the crap out of the system and they leave me alone. And that's why I swear at them. I just had someone from the NWO call me like two nights ago, trying to tell me to shut up. And I told them where to go. Similar to how I did in the shirtless video. That's why I'm not saying that for anyone. There's a lot of swearing in it. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I grew up in a family where we weren't super religious, but we believe there's some kind of God. You know, something made us. There's, there's good on the planet and evil on the planet. And everything being done right now is just basically yeah. societies trying to rule people through corporate act and statute that's a fraud and as soon as you claim your own community it's like in world war ii when hitler would ask you for your papers these these are affidavit of identity documents from an actual lawyer this is her attestment to me not being under act and statute anymore so this replaces my legal id i still show legal id if i go to a bank not my sin number but the other one's birth certificate that but this accompanies it so I have standing in both jurisdictions, but my personal rights are not ruled under anything corporate. And if they try and force me, that's where I have my fee schedule. It's called being a competent heir. It's the 1925 Administration of Estates Act. It just means you're competent to administer your own estate. Okay, makes sense. Um, I, I'm sure people wanna ask questions. Um, okay. So we have, we have another question here, which is, so how do, you enforce, how do you enforce one's right to travel both in automobile and otherwise? What do you do? Do you use a passport? What do you use? Excellent question. Well, for me personally, I recognized when I started this journey, there was going to be certain things that I would continue doing the old way and certain things I wouldn't. Um, also being involved in the weed community for a number of years. Now it's legal, so it's fine. Uh, but you learn how to do things off radar anyway after you get raided and you seven cops have guns to your head in your own house and stuff and you're pretty pissed about that. Uh, you don't tell them where you are anymore. You start putting privacy in place. Sorry, hold on one second. Hugh, he has a flip phone. Sorry, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I use a flip phone to this day. It's three it's <laughs> GPS. You can't track it on a website. It looks stupid and people look at me like I'm lame, but that makes me 30 grand a month from my, my private, legal, lawful marijuana stuff I do in that. Um, so, and again, even most of that, I just put back into programs and whatever. Like I've been lucky and I haven't, all the people out there who think I'm trying to steal someone's money, in 11 years, I've probably accepted a total of less than $20,000 in gifts total from the public. Everything else self-funded. Um, and when we accepted that money, it was for a community food program that we were running. And that went to like milk and bread and diapers and stuff like that. Um, but so long story short is I don't drive. Do I have a truck? Yes. Do I have a problem <laughs> plate? Yes. Uh, do I know enough I could do it and have my ID with me and be right? Yes. Are cops stupid? Yes. Are they ignorant Nazis? Yes. Do they give a rat's ass about law? No. <laughs> Every time in 11, back when I was younger, I got arrested all the time for different things. Never anything too big. I never did any jail or anything, but just sticking up for people or some silly whatever. Um, but since I got into sovereignty, and I talk about actual law, cops joke around about how they're a gang. They, they've assaulted me, they've, they've done all kinds of stuff. And I still tell them to kiss my ass because I came from the streets before I learned law anyway. So I, I don't care either way. I'm like a Tupac mentality in a white boy. <laughs> but, uh, but peaceful and I can't rap and I have no music talent. <laughs> um, so long story short is if I'm gonna do any of that, I hire a driver at this point. They will drive me or i'm in a city so i use cabs um i did meet a gentleman where you can actually i believe it's through progressive and geico are the two insurance companies he mentioned but if you have proper tribal rights under your own society once you found your own society under private law it's sovereign rights held by indigenous power if you're born on earth you're indigenous to earth you don't have to live in a jungle your unincorporated rights are your indigenous rights are your god-given rights private law same thing all the same different words same thing. um I lost what my point was. <laughs> traveling, we were oh, tra uh, traveling. So yeah, so Geico and Progressive, my understanding is uh, if you have your tribal standing, they can insure private plates. So you can have private insurance for your tribal plates to do it that way. Are you correct to travel without that? Yes. Have I registered my truck? No, but I also don't drive it as long as it sat there for three years. I have it. So if stuff gets bad, we can get out of the city pretty much. That's about it. Um, but um, if, if you want to do it, the long story short is, do you have the right? Yes. But are police a gang that are going to kick the crap out of you for it? Probably. At some point. Like, I don't know. With you, they, they may not have assaulted you. Like, you have more experience than that than I do. But I know everyone who drives like that typically at some points gets arrested and violated. So if you're prepared for that, do it. If you're not, you can register a truck under a private holding company. 
That's how and, we do. and drive it that way. And, and really, I would never have anything under my own name ever again anyway. I do have a private exactly. company. I have a society. I, I put things under whatever I need to because my name is never on anything anymore. And uh, even my ID, when I use ID, uh, has our society office address, not my personal address, even my taxes, everything. And if anyone disputes that, I say, that's my private law firm. They go through everything before I get it. That's where you send it. And if you have a problem, we're going to bill you. Because when I went to do my health card, they, they tried to ask me on my home address. I'm like, you're a liar. No, it isn't. You know. But the more police state we get, the more you try and do that, the more they're going to call security and, and cause you problems. So it's still good to know, though. But there are ways to do it where you don't have problems. And if you just use it for financial planning and for owning stuff, it, it, you won't have any problems. It's only when you advocate against the system. They put me on Winnipeg's top 10 most wanted when I started billing police cadets with my <laughs> notes and stuff, right? So, you know, the, the, it, the more you go with it, the more they're going to come at you. But if you correct the process and you are peaceful, you have every right. And if they're coming at you with guns, you do have the right to protect yourself. Um, there is that farmer or the rancher in the States maybe a few years back where he, he got in a gunfight with the police and they ruled that he was right, but he's dead after right so the number one thing is once you have a society own a bunch of properties right you don't tell anyone you don't trust with your life where you are this is where privacy is important community is important um and and i'll stop there and go ahead association is also important i like what yesera wrote so many sovereign mo movements why don't you all unite and form a friends of sovereign society you know that's something i've been trying to do yesera i love that i love that and what do you think about that marcel basically what we have is, is uh, Grab this here. Yeah, I have it on a card here. Um, here we go. So uh, we have peacemakersociety.org is our actual results for 10 years. And then all rights reserved university.org is our teaching course. Those are the blank templates we altered so it's simple so people can just whip through it. And then mm -hmm. vipempire.org is the vision for what you're talking about. It's basically, as we come into experts, like with you, you're, you're really good on the right to travel. Um, we just need a strong administrative team of about five to 10 people. They can be from all different groups. Uh, and then from there, it's setting up unincorporated economy. So um, let me just look at community Absolutely. programs, public awareness teams, advocacy, unalienable rights, patrols, no-kill animal sanctuaries, free food, organic greenhouse programs. And we've already have all of that set up to go. I already have I have all kinds of things to show you guys here. Let me just hold on a sec here. Um, <laughs> we got together with... Um, He's adorable. We got together with... Uh, in 2014, I had 44 staff that were all PhDs or 20-year experts. Um, and we put together, basically, I had them administratively organized, voluntary global cooperative government, basically, of everyone being their own sovereign. And that's how come you can't really join Peacemaker Society. You found your own under your own rights and law. And even if you and two friends are founding it, we encourage you each to found your own and co-found with each other. Yeah, because you're basically forming a family trust or a private yeah. trust. And if you're the only signatory, no one can ever steal it from you. Yeah. And the other thing is a lot of challenges really for people coming together are the differences in community standard. So you, right now, a reason a lot of people wind up in divorce, I'll come back to this, it wind up in divorce is you, you're attracted to somebody, you meet them, but you line up community standard after the fact. So, so you figure out what she likes, he, she figures out what your family is, and then usually you'll side a little to one side or a little to the other to appease however this power dynamics or, or structure of your relationship or that ecosystem work. Mm -hmm. But by doing that, a lot of times, especially if your community standards are different in certain ways, you'll, that's where you build resentment. And then that's where one side will be infringing on the other. So in my own life, my wife that I have, uh, we've been together five and a half years. I was five years into my journey. She was new to this. She's since founded her own society. And you have to get past all your old programming and all the legal stereotypes that we've had in our heads since we're kids. You know, I don't have the right to command her to do anything, nor would she let me. She's Portuguese, she doesn't say that. <laughs> and, uh, and within that, neither does she try and do that with me. And we each have our own society. So we're not a threat to each other in any way. And through having our own societies defined, we knew our community values lined up. So that's why getting your society initially is really important because then you're able to determine by putting out there who you are, you'll attract the like-minded people and repel the ones who aren't. And, and I think that's been the difficulty is, it's like a lot of people, there, there's a group of people that want to do a town of 150 people. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but usually when you do that, it's good for a while, but then there's power struggle, someone's Still fighting power. somebody. So what we plan on doing is right now we're actually looking at an island in Canada uh, for, we're, we're, it's in an indigenous community, so we're gonna get a good deal, uh, but not an unfair deal, like a thousand to 1500 a month, which is about fair rate. Um, but I'm just honored that we have somewhere to go even. I feel like it's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to teach them how to do it all under sovereignty and all of that. But we're not going to disclose where that is. So what I encourage everyone to do, get enough wealth that you and your family or the people that are your close-knit circle can kind of be an island to yourself. And then also set up community projects with other people where you do go and hang out and work together. But so you can still go back to your own standard at the end of the day. So that six months down the road, you don't all want to kill each other because you're all mad at how everyone's doing everything. Now, that's the hurdle that I see. It's very, it's very much able, people can get past it. And a lot of people are good with community. I grew up kind of more of a lone kid, so maybe that's just more my issue. If you're good with community, then you'll be great. Like, yeah, I'm an only child, so yeah, that's kind of a weird thing. I, I remember looking at other children and just thinking they were animals. <laughs> right? Yeah. I moved around a lot as a kid, so I got that. <laughs> new kid, so yeah, you find out pretty quick what the, what the little ecosystems are. And ecosystems are, yeah. Yes, I, and I, I remember it was really hard for me to learn that once you had argued that you could actually make up, because as an only child, you don't learn that with brothers and sisters around where they do such horrible things to each other and still play with each other afterwards. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yes, so um, let me see here. There's another couple of questions. So Dr. T asks, can you have your private auto in a 508C1A. Do you know what a 508C1A is, by the way? Not specifically, it's some form of, of nonprofit or corporate something. Yeah, it's an, except, it's an exception. It's not an exemption, it's an exception. So within the IRS code, for instance, they have what's called a, a 508C1A. They have an, something that is outside their code. And Those, meant, that, that's I'm familiar with, but you're still defined as a corporation, so you're still owned. As soon as you go corporate, you're someone's bitch. Like, sorry to phrase it that way, but like in the streets, like in Winnipeg, I grew up on the streets as a teenager. Let me explain that statement before people get upset at me. Um, in Winnipeg, there's a lot of pressure to join gangs in any major city or, or, or place yeah. where, where there's a lot of, you know, just, just economic struggle, whatever, right? It can be a pretty serious place. So in Winnipeg, you have all the weak people that join the gangs, even the bikers, the mob, all those people are pussies. You have a few people that are solid in those organizations, usually near the top. I'm not saying that they're all stupid and all whatever, but you basically have a bunch of degenerates that are basically drug addicts that are running around causing all kinds of mayhem. They're not organized business people like people think. Maybe in the mob. Mob maybe a little bit more. And not that I know the whole mob. I've met a couple low people in my years or whatever. But long story short is in Winnipeg, <laughs> a lot of people try and own you and you got to be stand yeah. up. And if you're stand up, nobody owns you, right? Like even just that old school good boy attitude, like, or good good lady attitude. I'm not trying to be sexist. Sorry if any of my terminology no, I understand. I mean it that way. Uh, to me, everyone's equal. That's why I teach equal rights all day. Everyone is equal in rights and law. And then it's what you do with that and your talent and your ability. That's my uh, and what about age? Is age included in that? What about children? You th are they equal? Are you look at that as equal? Do you? Yes. Yeah, let, let me explain what your sovereignty is. You in the universe, whatever that means to you, put your living soul in your flesh and blood body. That makes you a nation unto yourself. Yes. And that's right from when you're born. You have rights from the second you're born. That's why as much as... I'm very pro-woman's choice on the abortion issue because I know women that have been raped. I know women that have really, you know, they already had, they were like 16, they have four kids already. There's no way they could have taken care of another one. I'm not there to judge them on that. But in law, I also understand the argument for pro-life because as soon as it's conceived, it does exist as a sovereign life. So to go in and take that, and that's where I'm not settling that issue at all. I'm just saying that <laughs> yeah, I get both, but on, on what you're talking about, sovereignty Absolutely. from the moment of conception, you are a nation unto yourself. If a barber cuts one hair on your head without permission, that is assault. And that is why everything has to be offers. And the next time a corporation tries to tell you that you have to do something, say, well, should I try and tell that to my date when we go out and have dinner? It's like, no, it's like that is contractual rape. It's forced intercourse. It's any corporation forces you to contract. And that's why even District of Columbia in Washington is a corporate jurisdiction separate from the Republic. And every president that's ever been a part of that is a war criminal by definition. In politics, when I was studying early on, I learned that if you object to that system, you were supposed to step down instantly. You, you, you inform them of your objection and you step down. Everyone participating in it to any degree as a leader in it is 
doing something bad as far as a war crime against mankind and womankind, especially that they don't disclose the difference between legal and law. That's the biggest fraud there is. And all lawyers are a piece of shit. <laughs> even so, the good ones, even the good ones. I have a lawyer that did my notary document and I have, I respect her for that, but she still does that. For not themselves. <laughs> I always wonder who are their friends? I do know one, but I, I, they have no friends. <laughs> right? The odd time people call me a lawyer and I trip out on them. I'm like, not a lawyer, I'm an advocate. There's a difference. I know law. I have my own law. There's a difference. So yeah. So what else would you like to do for the future? Like what's your plans? How would you like, how do you want to see things going forward? Excellent question. Basically where we're at as a society for Peacemaker Society is I have all of the work pre-done for everybody. So we've done the hard work. We've proven the jurisdiction. We've gotten programs, run them for a year. People can see all those numbers. Someone wants to set up a food program. They want to set up an advocacy patrol. They want to found their own society. We have all the templates, all proven, all how to do it. You want to earn a living from sovereignty. We have proven how to do that. I've gotten between $1,500 per uh, her sovereignty package, which our whole freedom kit, which you guys are going to see for free at some point when we're done the Q and A part a little bit. I'll take you guys through our website, providing you guys are open to that and would like to. But I'll show you guys actually what we have. Um, but once you actually do your own society, you can start selling to other people your results. Now, people say freedom should be free. Bull. Trust me, the stuff's not free. I've self-funded most of this, and it's not free. No, no part's free. Even to send a registered letter costs money. Everything costs money. Um, the other thing is, if it's free to you, it means someone else paid for it. And the other thing is, if you want something for free, that's using people. Uh, that, that's slavery, is expecting someone to do a bunch of stuff for, for nothing. I grew up in a sales family, and my parents, even when they get me to babysit, my sisters would pay me a buck an hour. They just taught me, my, my, I have value, my time has value, not to let people use me. And then in business and entrepreneurialism, you have to add value and get paid for that, or you're not going to exist, right? So, yes. um, did I answer your question? No, sorry. Oh, uh, just as far as $1,500 per package, or my time, if I'm billing for it, is $10,000 an hour. Um, there was a lawyer who is gonna set up an NGO for someone in Australia, his price to her was $77,000. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And the same thing happens with my three letters. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's same crazy. standing globally. And as soon as you guys do that process, you can do that for other people. We have one debt letter that gets rid of any debt. You just call the debt company, let them know, no one explained birth certificates or slave bonds and that they're stripping you of rights to be a corporation. So we're not paying it. And if you bill us again, we're gonna bill you. And, and then they go away. Um, so once you really start using your sovereignty, economic problems are gone. If they bankrupted me personally, I have a society and a holding company and I could open 10 more societies tomorrow. There's nothing they can do to you financially once you have a society because the whole legal system is a joke. Unless you're trapped in it with no other means, then it sucks. Uh, absolutely. Um, so someone else is asking, oh, Joe's asking, how do you get one of your shirts? How does he get one of your shirts? <laughs> Excellent <laughs> question. I have, I, I basically, this is where... For the last couple of years, I had kind of shut down. Long story short is I have a suitcase full of them. We have them <laughs> up to extra large size. I think I have about 60 in stock. I'm, I have it close to 100, but I wear them every day now as my uniform. So I have about 20 in a drawer because <laughs> I don't like doing laundry every day. Um, but yeah, we do have them. Um, and then on top of that, um, when we go through this, I'm actually going to show you guys a document that has exactly what the shirt says on it. We did have a whole bunch of these. That's the other thing, you guys, we have... Everyone's worried about them shutting down the internet, right? Or what happens if we can't talk to each other? How are we going to fight back? Go back grassroots. That's what you do, bright pink flyers on everyone's front door. You Kirby vacuums the crap out of everybody. But instead <laughs> of selling them a vacuum, you bring them information pieces. And with our food program, that's what we would do. Hi, here's some free information on your right. By the way, we're collecting food for you know, families that don't have. Um, and your, any programs you set up are supplemental to the existing system. And mm -hmm. it's anything that you go into competition with, you can litigate all agents corporately of your competition for being a fraud. If you want a hostile takeover your, your, your market. Because anything corporate right now that isn't divulging the legal limitations of who and what they are is a fraud. And I get into this with banks. I'm not allowed at Royal Bank anymore because I sent the agent too much information because they wanted my legal ID and I'm not required. I use sovereign ID. Um, TD is a good bank for a sovereign association. Uh, the other thing is if you're doing an association, do not incorporate it. 501c, see anything, you've diminished yourself. You want to you do it under your own rights. You're basically, you're literally an emperor or an empress of your own society jurisdiction because that just means you're operating programs under your own sovereign right. 
If you're a king or a queen, you're owned by a church, which is usually a 501c and not standing under God anyway. Yes, very true. In so, their standing, their heart might be, and their soul might be. I'm not judging people. Maybe yeah, they, don't no, but, but. they don't even have free, free speech at that point. But anyway, um, so if you would like to share documents with everybody, if you wiggle your mouse towards the bottom of your screen, you'll see a green, a yep. green rectangle. Yep, so you can share if sure. you want to take okay. something. So yeah. I'm going to take you guys on the tour now so you can see what we have. No one has ever seen this as far as our full thing goes because I've never had access to a program like this because I suck at technology. So um, okay. I'm going to take you guys to yeah. Peacemaker Society first. I have this on phones. So this is our actual results over the 11 years. Um, sorry, my computer's lagging a little bit here. It should... Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay. um, my screen is frozen. Are you... Are you still seeing me? Are you guys there? I can see me. <laughs> so hold on a minute. I'm going to stop you from sharing and maybe that yeah, will yeah. unfreeze your screen. Thank you. Nope. That's not working. Let me see. Whoops. Oh, I don't even know where I'm clicking. There we go. All right, so now you should be able to screen share again, I think. No, nope. yep, there you are. I got you back. I, I'm still completely blank. I have a black screen right now, so. Oh, okay, well, we'll wait for your screen to catch up. If anybody has questions, if you guys all know, should know how to raise your hand. If you um, put your cursor over where you have participants, so you click on participants, and on the, you'll see more. When you, when you hover over your name, you'll see more. If you click on more, you can raise your name. I mean, raise your hand, sorry. Okay, I'm in a post attendee thing right now. I'm just gonna find my okay. way back to the meeting. All right. Whoops. Yep, I'm getting I'm getting some strange mine is stuck too. It's because we're getting to the juicy stuff, that's why. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like it, I'm telling you, all the time. Terminator 3, man, I'm telling you, except for I'm kidding, obviously, we're nowhere near no, that. But it, it is, sometimes I think it's our excitement that does it. <laughs> okay, so, uh, John, okay, it seems like my computer's working again, let me get the group okay. meeting thing here, and I'll be right back in there. You saw Henry? They are. You got them. That was pretty good. Oh, blue! You made it. I wondered where you was. Okay. Hi. Are we good? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, I can't hear you now. Oh. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you, hear me now? you can hear me. Yes. <laughs> All right. There we go. You can hear. I, you know what? I can't hear you. Um, okay. Should I maybe just like quickly reboot my computer and then come right back okay. or? Okay, I'll be back in two minutes. Just let me shut it down. And Okay, thank you. All right then. We're gonna catch, I think Henry went that way. Sorry, we're catching chickens. <laughs> At least I think we are. So oh, where was you, Blue? I went to get beer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you okay. wear your mask? <laughs> okay. I think we're all good again. I think I found right. where we were. Okay. I closed a bunch of stuff. So sorry about that. Okay. Give me one sec here to just uh, get the screen share reopen. And I'm just going to take it. I had it all pre open. So I'm just going to go through this one thing at a time here. And then okay. maybe that'll make it. If you guys do want to ask any questions while I'm getting this open, feel free. What's the topic? Who is that? <laughs> it's Dawn. Hi, we're looking at the Peacemaker Society. Are you familiar with that? No, never heard of it. Okay, well, here we go. You're going to learn all about it. Just, just to summarize her question there, basically we're a society where we've proven for 11 years how to exercise private law 
uh, sovereign rights held by indigenous power. If you're born on earth, you're indigenous to earth. And we've been recognized by the legal system for it, even though we're exterior to it. And it's pretty much how to earn a living with your sovereignty, with proven templates that are not biased to any community or religion or anything like that. It's just private law and you fill them out. Uh, how you want, and it's just a way out for people from the legal slavery uh, that's really relevant right now with so many people being forced to do all the crazy stuff. So, um, so I'll show you guys here, basically, this is our main page when you first get to the website. So we've organized it into individual, family, single parent, entrepreneur, business, law, financial planning, advocacy, if you're a group or association, truth movement, public school system, and vaccines and fluoride. Um, so depending on which one of those demographics apply most to you that's what you would click and start with and then i'm just going to show you guys a little bit about our credibility here uh, for those that don't know us because we're pretty well kept secret um part of that is you cannot advertise anything against the system in most newspapers or bus bench ads or any billboards um, you can promote yourself in a positive way but a lot of them you're not allowed um, so we have uh, testimonials here from brock cop watch uh, this is Brian, age nine. He did a little video on how old people are messing up the planet and young people need to learn their rights. Keith Bigger was the manager of probation services. Uh, he was my probation officer when all that, they had raided me in that and I had founded my society so I let him know he's a corporation and we basically muzzled them so I didn't have to answer questions and they left me alone pretty much for most of the probation. Um, Drew Vocals, we had some artists do some songs. Uh, Mike Cook was my criminal defense lawyer who represented me with all rights reserved on the record. And uh, you guys can see the court transcripts, I'll show you. Craig Clark's one of our other founding members. Randy Shannon, she ran for U.S. Senate. We've done shows with her in the past. Nice. Uh, Anonymous has a support video for us. Um, we have people doing the Competent Air Challenge. Uh, shouldn't have an R on there, but... I do our admin, so I'll have to fix that. <laughs> um, so uh, we have people around the world that basically it's just learning your rights, filling about your paperwork, sending it, and founding your own society. We have no jurisdiction over your society. So if there's no angle in it from us. Aside from if more people know their freedom, mine's going to be safer too. Uh, B.S. Fulmer Show, The Canadian Libertarian. Um, we've done a bunch of University of Winnipeg, Student Association of Winnipeg. I met Pinrose Dominique. I um, North in Action Group. So again, we've just done lots of stuff. We've been in the free press, different newspapers. Um, because I have a sales background, I recognize we need to show proof of all our stuff. So I just made it all very transparent. And then for our core transcripts, uh, legal core transcripts, you don't need codes for any of this. The only thing that has codes on the website is the Freedom Package. Um, but again, you're going to have access to all of that, Jackie. Uh, you can read cool. it out. And then this is our actual, I just kind of put the key, the main point. So just so you can see, a lawyer can represent you with all rights reserved. They usually won't do it. I had to threaten to lean my lawyer, and he'd been my lawyer for about 15 years before I was able to break him down to do it. He didn't want to do it. But uh, I had had my identity document with me when they arrested me. So mm -hmm. it proved that they were noticed of my jurisdiction. So I was able to use that and the threat of leaning him to get him to go in with all rights reserved. And the judge just about had a shit. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, you're not supposed to be telling me this. And then the crown consented because I had agreed I wouldn't litigate or go after them if they would enter it on the record, basically, because I was trying to create the our court a record that they are a criminal fraud. Because it's really hard to get any court to recognize a jurisdiction outside of their legal person or crap. You almost can't do it. So that was kind of my my schmooziness to get it done. And then the freedom package here, I have physical copies of the freedom package, but obviously digital is a lot easier for people. Um, so these are our actual documents that we used in the first five to seven years, uh, how you bill a police officer, how you bill a judge. Um, again, just have evidence of the crime, have the fee schedule in place already, and then uh, and then we have the actual lien that's been done. I have an advocacy document uh, that starts the process for you. And then from there, you can finish it. Um, and here we just have the get a debt letter. So these are Canada Incorporated listed on sec.gov. We have the actual paper. No, hold on, one, one quick second. affairs when we shut them up because they said we were raise, we may be raising funds outside of charity stuff and we just let them know we're not a charity run registered incorporated, leave us alone. Noticing the crown, how not to contract. So the rules of contract to get a corporation to leave you alone, how to place liens, billing a judge, private law fee schedule. A big problem with societies is your liability for other people in your society. So you, let's say they false flag you, you get bigger and somebody does something crazy. This independent contractor agreement is a template we adjusted uh, from being a natural gas broker. It was written by huge 
billion dollar conglomerates to cover their ass pretty much. So they couldn't get sued if any of our agents did anything stupid, which a lot of them did. Uh, not me, but uh, anyway, uh, but this protects you basically and we updated it to include sovereign definitions of all of that. The banking administrative process for debt, that's how you prove any legal contract or debt is a fraud. You use the banking process to prove if a debt or a contract is valid. That's in there for you. Uh, the actual three letters to found your society, you get the, the ones that we did. In the university, all rights reserved university.org. Those are the templates you use if you're doing this yourself. This is just our proof, so we're showing you transparently what we've done. Um, and then notice for understanding, tank claim of right, founding society document, uh, new society member, billing, uh, bill of service to police. Um, and again, these are all things I've done. I've cured over $80 million in bills against them, and I'm just waiting until we can get them all to go through and do it. Uh, to my understanding, there's no statute of limitations on securities fraud, and that's what every action they're doing against anyone in the public is pretty much. So um, from there, you just unincorporate association, sovereign bank accounts, legal results, previous media efforts and poetry. And then we had uh, PhDs and people with 20 years experience do a sociological and economic write-off on a whole bunch of rap videos and YouTube videos, just my personal playlist, and tie it all into corporate slavery because it permeates everything. There's not a bunch of problems in the world, there's one, and that's that people think corporations posing as government are a government when they're not, and they don't know how to found their own or how to be productive with it in a way that they can be big enough to really be okay. And that's what we've proven how to do. And now we're just launching the actual infrastructure. So that's like with you, Jackie, um, we're starting to reach out. I'm willing to meet once a week with anyone interested who has already a proven expert in some way. They fought the fight, they, they have some victory, some, some under their belt. Um, and each of us organize our own societies, but then also coordinate the other people on a local basis. For me, I just, I, I, I run a, a private law weed dispensary. I do this as well. And once it starts scaling up, it's impossible for one or two or yeah. three people to run it. And that's where to afford the salary for people up front, you'd need $10 million in salary a year for the amount of talent you need to run this. So what I'm proposing is anyone that wants to use our intellectual property, I'll teach them, I'll waive all fees to it if you're an expert in some way in exchange for however many hours a week you'd like to help out just organizing and running it. It's all voluntary, basically we meet once a week, we decide what the goal is. And I had people, I actually dated a girl for about three years who was in the Department of National Defense. She was their administrator and she helped me organize how to do committee meetings, how to define your treasurer. So basically we have everything that if no one's ever done any of this you can walk through and it's all pre-proven all pre-done and all pre-templated so i have blank templates for everything including what to promote and again each of you are welcome to change it all to your own societies this isn't designed to be under me i'm just here to teach what we've done and make you guys so we're all equals because that's what sovereigns are they're equals and i'm gonna shush now and uh, i see the gentleman i did blue lotus traveler i watched you on a video with jackie you are entertaining as heck, and I, I'm very excited. Oh my, don't tell him that. He's fantastic. <laughs> the whole time you're listening to you, Jackie, you're watching it, my wife and I, and we're like, he's got to be a hippie of some kind, because he's drinking drinks, he's eating, he's in it, but he's just doing his own thing, and we, we found you completely entertaining. Jackie, you're entertaining, obviously, as well. But it was a nice little side show there, so that's awesome. So um, the Freedom Package, that's the only thing where there's codes, all this other stuff, members area life, coaching news, guides, we have all these up just as guides so people can define who and where they are uh, to guide themselves. And then we also have videos on YouTube, um, if you search Peacemaker Society. And then I'm just gonna go to the university program. To show you guys. I'm so excited to be able to give a digital tour. I've never been able to do this, because again, I, I don't, no technology that well and this is so user-friendly Jacqueline or Jackie sorry um within like an hour I was like this thing is kid proof and then I talked to my wife about it and uh she has a cleaning company and the kids at one of her clients use this all the time she's like yeah they're six they use it I'm like okay I'll, I'll figure it out <laughs> Um, so this is our competent air degree course. So I'll just go through the headings because for time's sake I won't go through all of it all of it. Oh hold on oh. in here I gotta click happy. Okay, so uh, for Found Your Own Society, that's all the paperwork. So when I am going to take you guys into that, but I'll just do the overview here first. Um, so those are the documents, the blank templates. Once you go into Found Your Own Society purpose process, you have everything you need to found your own society. 
Uh, then we get into notice, due process, claiming rights, society branding, independent contract room. So we literally break down every part of sovereignty and we made it really simple where it's, it's like a one page cheat sheet. Everyone hates high school. I get that. <laughs> so I just want to check. You have the cheat sheets. That's pretty cool. I tried to have us? this all pre open for you guys so we'd save this, but uh, that's okay. Can you hear us, Marcel? Can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Exactly. Oh, I don't know. Okay. If, I don't know. You can hear. Okay. I don't think. I don't know if Marcel can hear us. Thank we'll get you. in here, guys. Sorry, I was entering the one password for the first section, but I jumped ahead to the second section. Thank you. And now it's just lagging. Here we go. Okay. So when it finally lets you in, when you're on your normal computer, it works very quickly. I think it's just because we're on the, the screen share, but we break down how to found your own society. So literally first you pick a name, now search online. You're like, so whatever society you pick ended in .org and buy the domain. Just so if there were another society, you're not competing copyright wise for that. Um, get a virtual office address. It has to be a street address, not a PO box. So you can use Regis or any shared working space, basically. A lot of them are from home now, but you can still rent a virtual office package for about 20 bucks, 50 bucks, somewhere in there. Uh, you do your found in paperwork, letter one, two, three, explaining what those are. And then it, basically just how to form a mastermind group for your society, just like-minded people for your goal. And then down here is a template. So you literally just click these. These are some, uh, this is the ac accountability litigation document. You know what? I'll actually give you guys the code to this one. It's free life two. So F R E E L I F E two. Uh, so anyone watching this that gives you access to it, you can download all those documents for free. Um, and then, um, the document ID that I have that the lawyer did notary is page one, two, three there. And then down here, there's just different documents that we've done. And then the independent contract agreements, uh, the gift and pay schedule that goes with that. So you define the role of whoever you hire, to go with the contract and their pay, and then the actual blank talk documents to found your society, creation of society document, your society oath, and that's it. And then the lawful document originals, legal results, those are the freedom package on peacemakersociety.org. So that's basically that. And then the rest of this is just literally going through what is due process, how do you do society branding, what's an independent contract agreement, um, if you guys want me to go into these, I can, but it's, I can just kind of summarize based off the headings. Um, this is just everything you need to really run a private law society. And then my thing I'm most proud of that I want to organize is a lot of people are unlawfully arrested right now. When I was unlawfully arrested uh, for standing up for homeless people and assaulted, uh, we had the leader of the Canadian Action Party calling the prison. We had people doing letter writing campaigns. We probably had 30 or 40 people calling every five minutes. The director of correctional services switched out all the guards. The guards were begging me to quit complaining. I, I was a support worker for people with disabilities for about five years. So when I'm in prison, I do advocacy incident reports for every basic need not being met by that institution or guard or every verbal abuse or no toilet paper they didn't need. Um, nice. I usually get a solitary confinement cell because it's nice. It's, it's good. I prefer that. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but within that, that's how you really, they were begging me to stop. So if we organize 5,000 people like that, and every time they wrongfully arrest somebody. Every time. That's what yeah, we need to and, do. And our goal is, is to get enough funding in the coffers that every time you make a phone call, you earn a buck 50. Like make it that everything we do is paid and we have a pay structure with every program. Everyone wants to do things for free. The problem with doing volunteers is they cannot afford to do it full time because they have to go earn a living killing things. <laughs> right? Like, and I don't mean that, but most jobs for the legal system yeah. cause harm. So instead of being able to feed people, our, our food program, we would give 15% of what was collected daily back to the individual and the family that went around collecting it. The money usually wasn't a huge amount. 15% of what you collect in a four hour shift for food and diapers isn't that that much. But the food they would get was enough that kids who were 14 and 15 years old were bringing more food home than their whole family could eat. And that's every day. And then they'd be like, well, I don't even want to take it because I don't need it. And I'd say, well, who do you know that doesn't have enough food? You know someone on social assistance? You know somebody? And they'd be like, yeah, I have a brother. I have this. I have that. Everyone's so used to going and taking care of strangers. We feel guilty when we 
take care of our own. And that's where having a society, my society is nonprofit, but all that means is 50.1% or more of the money goes to serve programs that help everybody. Right, 49%, 49.9% can be used for administration, whatever. Uh, I don't keep any of the money. Again, I have a private law weed dispensary. It's legal and they shut down most of my competition and I'm under private law. So it's really easy right now. Um, but within that, it, it's, it's a foolproof system. And once you have your own society, you are your own community and you can run any program as your own government and you don't need their permission anymore. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Has so, anybody got questions? Yes. Does anyone have questions? Do you guys have to type questions or can you guys ask questions? <laughs> All right, one. let me go back to some questions that were in there. Oh, of course you would speak up. Where's your hand? You haven't raised your hand. I'm not, I'm not calling on you till you raise your hand. <laughs> Where's your <laughs> hand? <laughs> go ahead, Mike. <laughs> it's, a real, it's a real simple one. You said it was called Free Light 2. Can you repeat what that? Oh, uh, the code, yeah, free life, L-I-F-E-2. So F-R-E-E, L-I-F-E-2. Dot org or what? No, no, that's just a code. It's just the code. Okay. It's on, yeah, all rights reserved university.org. And then it's the, the first subheading or the, the second heading when you go over it, the found your own society purpose process. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll let you guys know too on peacemakersociety.org, the codes for the freedom package are Marcel 1, Marcel 2, Marcel 3, no caps, no spaces. Uh, it just, it's, to, it's Marcel 1 through Marcel 8. And um, I don't want you guys. Yeah, yeah, so that's a package that we in the past have been paid 1500 bucks for. So Great. with that, you see what we did for 11 years, bills of service, uh, sovereign association bank accounts, the actual documents, the actual Okay, Emoto E5 Plus, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yes, uh, uh, All right. Martha, go ahead. I'm familiar with uh, some work. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we can. Go ahead. The, uh, the acquiescence of the offer uh, and the value in return for offer, I'm on board for the once a week. Uh, uh, I'm going through the competent heirs. Um, uh, 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 and familiar with Marcel and, and quite the following for a number of years. And uh, we, we have actually shared and utilized uh, documents on, on my behalf. Uh, I'm Joseph Parr, I'm on Facebook. And so uh, Marcel, uh, I've seen some of my documents be uh, uh, switched back and forth. And, and so they're all in similarity, but the law of agency and, and uh, your own society type scenarios is is what I, uh, is involved in the presence of principle on both the private and the public side, but remaining in the private, being coerced into these scenarios where they uh, kidnapped your your blood heirs. So that's 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 my point of view and being forced into this kind of thing. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll remain to struggle, keep strong. And uh, I'm in the state, so that's a little different. Uh, maybe not the different, but same different corporation. <laughs> There's something that's interesting, and by the way, I love everything you had to say, and I already like you. Just so you know, I, I sense your energy and your soul, and just way to way to way to be for freedom and telling the man the middle fingers. So. Yeah. <laughs> you're the man. You're the man. You too, brother. You too. And, and that's just when you say everyone's the man or the woman, right? Like so, uh, here, it's, uh, Tracy's with me, uh, Marcel, and so she's the introduction between us and my liaison between you and I. We haven't had the pleasure of speaking, but I wanted to clarify that. Beautiful. Um, and Jackie, if it's okay, can I ask you to coordinate the interest? Just take down names. And, Absolutely. And yeah. And that's something yeah. where I'd like to talk to you more, Jackie, once we're offline, just about coordinating the administrative side of things. I know you're a good Absolutely. administrator. I see that already to succeed. For you. Or you have administrative help. Um, <laughs> I do. What I mean by that is you're good with people, and I think you'd be good as a point of contact with people, like okay. just in the, in the whatever. Very good at bossing them around. Mike will tell you, I'm very good at pointing the finger and getting things done. <laughs> where, where one of my limits is, is I'm such an engineer and a nerd at this right now, when I'm really in the thick of it and intense things are happening, I'm not able to be the bedside manner that's needed for people. I come across a little Dan Pina y sometimes, but that's not a compliment to myself. Um, and, and I hate that about myself. It's just when there's so many pans in the fire, um, it's important to have that, that supportive anchor. And I, and I think that's something in your own right independently. And then oh, I'm thank you. meeting with that, that I see as a possible vision. And we'll talk more. We'll have to define. Yeah, we all have different strengths. And that's, that's how, why we all have to come together. You bet. So, you bet. so one of the other questions that's come up here is, 
if you don't mind me repeating, I was asking how much money we can expect to make from a fee schedule like you have. What would Good you question. estimate? Basically, mm -hmm. the way to look at a fee schedule is a lawful way to throw a punch and punch them in the face with paperwork peacefully, lawfully. Oh, with whatever oh, oh, what I mean by that is, if when in, when I go and do liens, I'm not expecting to get paid from those. Okay. I, I'm not. It basically, it's wasting $1,000 to stand up for myself. And that's why to really do mass liens, there's 1,400 police officers. I was just told a few days ago from a dirty cop that was trying to threaten me over a phone. <laughs> um, so uh, within that, you know, $1,000 an agent, that's what, 1.4 billion, right? And, or maybe 140 million. Yeah. Math might be a little long, but the amount of my, and that's Mike, the Winnipeg. Right. <laughs> right? So it, it's, it's like in the States, they're doing the criminal investigation into the World Health Organization. They put 500 million into that. Like I make good money, you know, I'm tens of thousands a month, but I don't have millions like that, right? So to literally go and lean entire departments the way we need to, to really shut them down, the people that are causing harm. And what I want to say with that is if there are good agents willing to respect corporate rules of conduct and respect private law, empower those people. You know, in Peacemaker Study, we're not out to get everyone. And in my own past, typically I am against police, but I have met decent people in all walks of life. But at the same time, you could say there were nice Nazis too. If you're a Nazi, you're still a piece of shit, right? So, so that's where, you know, if, if the legal system would acknowledge its own boundaries, it's the limitation of power from the Corporations Act. As soon as you go corporate, you can't exceed corporate contracting rules. And if they would just follow that, there really wouldn't be a problem. It's those shadow systems, so the Freemasons. In Winnipeg, I believe it's something like 93% of the police force is Freemasons. This is unofficial numbers. This is just what I've been told. But I know pretty much everyone in Winnipeg because everyone smokes weed. So you sit down and smoke a joint with almost everyone at some point. Um, and at least back in the day, now I don't. But, um, but yeah, so well, by having your own society, you're on equal footing with those global organizations but mm -hmm. under your own. So you're not under the bikers, you're not under the mob. You're, you know, the, I, I have a relative where the, the daughter was dating a son and he was involved in a gang. The gang hit a bunch of guns on his property. He did five years, he lost his whole property all because a gang ratted him out and did him dirty because they thought he might be. Yeah. You could deal with the devil or just a negative influence or something that thinks they own you. When you go against it, it crushes you. And that's why independent is so important. When I first got into weed, there was a bunch of independents around the downtown community, no one in gangs, but all very tough. And they would actually protect from guns being brought in or the hard drugs being brought in. But once the powers that be swept out the softer people, that's when all the really hard stuff came in. And downtown Winnipeg now is a messed out crackhead. Like, I mean, there's lots of good stuff there too, but it's, it's a scary place if you're not well equipped for it, you know? So uh -huh. that, that's why just being independent and owning your own society is so important, as well as just financial planning. We always hear accountants stealing everyone's money, right? If you are the only signatory to your private trust, no one can take it. And that's all a society is, the way we've set it. So in other words, George Carlin, he says, you know, there's a big club and you're not in it. <laughs> yeah, this is now you're making your own. <laughs> and, and that's what I always tell people, we need to make our own and we won't yeah. invite them. Um, and, and just for those people that, that um, don't know how much the courts are involved. So in California, for instance, we went right back into the archives and we looked at the beginning of the, the Supreme Court of California and it used to have the triangle with the G. <laughs> they had to change the symbol on their um, on their on their um, seal because it was you know it, it was Freemasonry so you know it, it's been there from the beginning they're, they're running it and all that means is they're pirates they just changed the logo they didn't change the heart of it they're just same society anyway um, not, next question will you be able to avoid the coming mandatory vaccinations tagging and tracking as if we are livestock. <laughs> Bring it up. Anyone tries to force anything in my body, I'll fucking stab them up. <laughs> yes. I like, like full claim of right. I don't give a shit. Like there's no way they're doing that to me. And if they do, I'm taking a few with me because that's them killing me. Mm -hmm. if, if they inject it, that is them between the tracking, the violation of rights. And then the, the, we have a video. It's uh, Dr. Maurice Hillman. Uh, he was the gentleman who invented the polio vaccine. And he laughed how cancer and AIDS were in it. And it's a documentary done by PBS that was not aired. And it's mm -hmm. on our Peacemaker Society original live content video playlist on YouTube, if people want to scroll through that. So when I say it's going to kill you, I'm, I'm being literal. Like it's, it's, it's a foreign thing. And just again, under sovereignty, no one has the right, especially not a corporation. That's where the only people, reason people are 
basically allowing these people to do this because you think they're a government on some level you've accepted that they're a legitimate something and they're not they're war criminals. corporation can't be a government i i was advocating with a um against parking authority one day and, and th they know me for years because every time i walk by i'm like it's a million bucks for that if i record you right now you're liable i wouldn't do that job and, and i just lecture them and whatever and this guy he was a young guy maybe 20 24 he just laughed in my face for about three minutes and i said to him i said you know if you want to be a criminal and not respect law maybe people will come up and just stab you one day i said maybe they'll just walk up stab you sometimes keep walking and you'll know why i would never do that like i know what i just said they try and force me but i'm talking people coming in my own home right when they have like thing within me saying that would i have the ability to maybe maybe not you can always lawyer up even if they make you sick you can fight back i mean i think the lord of the rings kind of put it best uh frodo was really sad about carrying the ring and talking about how he wished this didn't happen and all of that and gandalf comes in and he says you know it's not for us to decide the only thing you can really choose is what you'll do with the time that's given to you and when i was 18 the system took my kid you know when i was a teenager i have a lot of friends who aren't here anymore because they were in cfs or being abused Almost every woman I know has been raped at some point by somebody or sexually assaulted. There's no sense of community. No one's protecting anyone's schools. Sun Tzu are to war. Uh, he says only a fool would allow his enemy to train his child's mind. You know, um, just every action strategy, every corporate institution is, is a criminal fraud against all mankind. So we have the right to arrest them anytime. And if they want to be criminals, they can be dealt with criminally. I, I know lots of people that would have no problem going up and shooting cops and stuff. They, they probably won't ever do it because they don't want to go to jail for it. But if tanks are coming in the streets, you know, I am for peace always. Let me say this first of all. I'm not advocating violence. For 11 years, I've used peaceful process to be more powerful than violence. I can shine a light on people. I can lean them and I, I can have private security, private investigators follow them. I, if there's someone in the system doing something criminal, guaranteed they're doing other stuff. You can have them follow, do whatever you want. But as soon as you cross into harm, you are committing a criminal act. Unless you're using maximum mercy. Someone comes, you just put them down, you don't end them. Um, supporting people with developmental disabilities, I was taught gentle teaching. How if that individual loses self-dignity and respect, we are not allowed to pummel them in order to get that back. You be their friend, you use nonviolent crisis intervention. But what I am going to say is these people are murdering our children. They're taking our children. Right now in Canada, they've just authorized the military to go into the old age homes to supplement care because they ban nurses from going between care homes for this not imaginary coronavirus because it's a real thing but it's a misdiagnosis so what they're saying is full of shit. it's not a real thing it's it, the experts on viruses say it can't it's like aids if if it gets on the surface it dies because it needs biological matter to live and all these masks people are wearing if it were a real virus it would get in through your eyes anyway so you're still dumb <laughs> my, my, my yeah. wife was on a bus earlier today and uh she was sitting on the bus and there was a lady who got on went to sit behind one lady the lady freaked out, social distancing, moved back. First of all, if someone tells you you have to move because of social distancing, record it and bill them. First of all, ask their name. If they won't identify themselves, they're in the song, they can kick your ass. They do identify themselves and you can bill them once you have your sovereignty schedule. Uh, long story short though, the, the ladies moved further back and then there was some other guy on the bus who started tying into the, the lady who asked them to move because she was of Asian descent. He's like, they came from Asia, blah, blah, blah. She's freaking out about social distancing. And my wife laughed out loud. She started cackling the top, not top of her lungs, but she was belated in the laughing kind of way. And uh, and the lady turns to what's so funny? She's like, you're getting social distancing over an imaginary like virus that doesn't even exist. He's freaking out that it came from China when it came from your own fucking government. You guys were all bullshit. She, and it was right when she was getting off. She didn't swear. I'm the one swearing. She's sweet. She doesn't yeah. speak that way. Uh, but um, it's ridiculous. And that's where anytime I'm out in public, I remind everyone it's voluntary. The more freaked out people look, I remind them LondonReal.tv. David, I proved it's full of beans. You know, they misdiagnosed. Even the test they use, the guy who invented it, says it's not supposed to be used to test for viruses. Right, it's like it's just silly. So, yeah. So the mask has become the new tin foil hat. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's it's so cool. It's really turned things on its head. Um, Yasira, did you have a question you wanted to ask? I can unmute you. Hello? Yeah. Now I raise uh, yeah, my hand. Yes. I can... Yes, I do actually. Go ahead, sweetie. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask, um, I'm an average person that lives like an average, like, you know, that 
I could probably represent a lot of people in the war. And um, my way of looking at this is that it's very, um, um, it has different levels. It's like, a, like an onion. And um, my question is, how can we translate all this into practical use for everyone? Uh, because I believe that the best way to entice people to come into this is to show them benefits, yeah. practical benefits. Uh, and a lot of people like me, for example, I even got, I got registrations and I, I fall along inside the system, 100%. And yet I'm connected with this too, you know, and the problem with a lot of people to con you know that are in the system and, um, and connecting with this is fear. People have a lot of fear, mm -hmm. and it's been a lot of uh, examples where people, you know, because of lack of knowledge or whatever, when sovereign people want, you know, they confront. And a lot of people are not into confronting. They just want to live their lives peacefully. And so how can we, uh, the average people, how can myself as an average person that lives in the system show everyone that it's okay, that it's safe to come this way, that it doesn't mean that we have to become belligerent with every single person and um fight everything because i i think um i think this is not in personally it's a journey of consciousness more than fight mm -hmm. if a journey of 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 belief but at the same time it's also you know a physical thing too so how can we start benefiting physically with law with the laws and things like that like for example i would like to form to start working off the system because i i work in a hospital i want to switch myself off the hospital remove myself or if possible i would like to keep one foot in on each side yeah. why because yeah. then i can entice others anyway i leave it as there if i can have some I, I, love, I love what you're doing right there. So that's one of my favorite subjects because I consider that to be bridge systems. So what you're doing is you're keeping one foot in the old, uh, which a lot of people have to, you've got to live. But at the same time, you're, I mean, you're absolutely awake. You're ready for that new paradigm switch. And it, it's just going to take a little while. And it's, it's going to take a little um, um, rethinking. So we need you in our societies because we don't want to go to hospitals. So actually you're in the ideal um, position where you are needed. So anyway, go ahead, Marcel, because this is you right now, but I, I love, I love you. <laughs> I, I want to thank her very much for that question because she just got me excited to give you guys the answer because I have an awesome yeah, answer. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to give you guys the, the just soft average how this is going to go for most people. My journey has been a little extreme. You see extreme examples, but how's this going to go for your average mom and dad who just send the three letters, don't want to challenge the system, they don't want to work their legal job, maybe have a private trust, they can bank some money. And the answer is yes, you can do all of it. Yes. yes. So I'm going to read you two points off of my ID, or three points, and then I'm going to get into exactly how you can do that. So on the identity documents that uh, you guys have access to, that's on the university there, I gave you guys the code. Point number nine says uh, that the unregistered, unincorporated man and living soul known as Marcel Riley Bissette, your name would go there obviously if it's for you, reclaimed all inalienable rights as of September 3rd, 2009. He holds all his rights as sovereign rights held by Indigenous power. As per pure claim of right, the living man, Marcel Riley Bissette, now operates under the jurisdiction of Peacemaker Society Law. Now the next one, the next two is what you guys want. It answers your question. So the birth certificate still exists because the birth certificate is a slave bond. So as long as you have that, you can still interact with the system. Um, but Marcel Riley Bissette no longer contracts his private unalienable rights to be governed under act or statute, but rather as an unregistered, unincorporated flesh and blood man and living soul, which is now bound to Peacemaker Society sovereign oath as per lawful excuse via claim of right as, as 
It's in harmony with corporate law, common law, and natural law. So doing this process, um, and then it just says on the last page here, unless expressly stated otherwise by myself, in written contract, as interactive will require, require in certain circumstances from time to time, any and all agreements are entered into with all that 308, which references the right to reserve unalienable rights in a contract. So basically what's that saying, just to break it down into a little bit. Simpler. Marcel, let me interrupt for just a second, sure. please. Yeah. Um, it, you need to speak a little slower because what happens is the RAM memory doesn't allow the voice to conglomerate all the information too quickly. So it breaks up and you can't understand what's being said. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's a, it's a function of the computer system. It doesn't have the ability to uh, jam that much stuff real quick. You know, it's sure, trying to sure. translate it wrong. And okay. thank you for reminding me. Uh, I get a little bit excited and I start. I know. I, I at home voice instead of my I'm on a show voice. So I can slow it down a little bit. No problem. Okay. Um, it's good for the computer. For sure. So what I was explaining is uh, we're correct to corporate law, common law, and natural law. So because we're correct to all three, you can operate in all of it. It's recognized by all the so normal, average individual, if you're doing it, you would fill out the three letters. Letters one is asking questions, which is just, do I have the right to found a society? Can I call it the I Love Puppies Society? Or whatever name you come up with. Um, and then once you've asked the questions, you send letter two 10 days later. Once letter two has gone by 10 days, you make a claim of right. Day 31, it cures as your law. It takes 30 days, day 31, that cures as your law. That paperwork, first of all, when you send it to the president or the prime minister or where, whatever, whoever you know, they look at it, if they do, it goes in the drawer. I've never heard back or gotten anything from any letter we've sent. So it's more just you establishing your jurisdiction. They may very well look at it, but I've never had any happens in this because all you're doing is setting up a private trust. So that's not scary. Uh, if you use it for financial planning, anything you would operate as a business, you would operate it as a program under your society. By setting it up that way, you get out of all the unincorporated and have no joinder with the Canada Revenue Agency or the the feds and the states there. Uh, I don't remember what they're called at the moment, sorry. <laughs> um, IRS, that's it. Um, and if any agent tries pursuing you on that, they're liable for your society fee schedule. And it, I've been able to use that for 11 years to back off. And then uh, by having assets under your own society, if you have papers under your society, that's not touchable because like a corporation, it's a separate entity, even though it's unregistered, unincorporated, and anything you could do with it is or unincorporated association. And we've opened up creating your own intellectual property under that, or we have programs you can template and it's just turnkey. So whatever you guys want to do. But okay. that's how, if you use it just practically, the only time you get into it with the system is if you're doing advocacy. If you start really speaking out in public and trying to launch programs and start developing a following. But if you're Joe Schmo at a hospital or Joe Schmo, an accountant or whatever, you can set up a private society, still work your legal job, pay taxes on what you earn under your social insurance number or your whatever number if you're doing it that way. But then anything under your society is tax free. And why would you work like, I mean, maybe initially, but long run, you should have so much money in your society that working a job is just silly. But obviously, that's not right away for most people. You'll usually have one to three years of transition between doing both. So, so the idea is really to diminish the using of your social security and start raising what you do within your society. So as you get more kind of knowledgeable on how to do that then you start building that up so it worked out really good and i'll just show you guys this here this is from we don't have this open anymore so the account numbers can't do anything with them uh but uh this is cibc this is the type of account they open so they'll still spell it in all capitals but you have your documentation of it being correct so that's their mistake and you do it with all rights reserved so as soon as you have your three letters, you can go open a bank account and then you can be a glo operate globally and nothing corporate can shut you down. And if they do, they're liable for fraud and you, you litigate them and make their life miserable. And that's really how you go after them is just with fee schedules, public ridicule. Um, we're good, we've done at times a wall of shame where we'll put the, the agents and who they are and whatever up. And 
So did that answer your question, Yasira? So yeah, it basically, if you just use it privately, you, you send the three letters, you set up a private trust, it's just financial planning, no one will ever even know you have it unless you tell them, right? Like, aside from the one letter you send. But, uh, okay. and, and, and once you have your society, you set up all of your privacy under your society, and then no one has access to you anymore. Now, now what about- Yes, thank you. Okay, good. And um, what about unlawful detainers or post foreclosure evictions? I know that's a big thing in Canada as well. I have groups out there that, you know, I've spoken with in the past. So, yeah. Basically, my advice for people in a practical sense, first of all, should you have to pay income tax or property tax on your own property? No. For the enjoyment of use of your own property, do a corporation with the fraud? No. Reality is, if you don't pay it, are they going to send armed people? Yes. So what I tell people is make enough money with your society that you can pay that with all rights reserved and then go litigate everyone who may be paid. Okay. Right. You know, it, 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 Safety not, yeah, like it, it, the only thing I tell people is if it's where you're living, where your home is, where you're sleeping, you should not do anything that's going to cause armed people to come there. Yeah. You know, this idea of being a martyr, try and get that out of your head. I mean, it, <laughs> it happens great, but you know, what would happen if Martin Luther King were still around right now and JFK were still around right now and John Lennon was still around right now and all those people who came, never mind through history and just everything, you know, there's so many people that have, have put into this and, and we're really lucky we're at the point, they destroyed their own economy, guys. Now, for most people, they're like, how is that a good thing? Oh my God, but when you understand the power you have in earning power, you know, even if you just grow vegetables, anything, like they're collapsing the legal economy right now rich dad poor yes. dad talks about it dan tina talks about it we're going into great yeah. unlike anything that's ever been seen um so in those times set up your own programs you know exactly. first thing is food greenhouses another yeah. thing is they're they're bankrupting all the farmers right now in manitoba i believe it's six, six cents for a hog someone told me because it's not whatever so i've started calling farmers directly and buying from them Right? Like, well, we don't we need, need the corporate structure. Everyone just doesn't understand. You can operate something that looks identical, that's unregistered, unincorporated. You can still call yourself a president if you want, but you're unregistered, unincorporated instead of being corporate. Whatever yeah. structure you're used to in the corporate system, you can mirror it in unincorporated association, but your rights are separate and reserved, right? And they're liable yeah. if they mess around. So, um, Yes. So someone asked, which of your processes are effective, reliably, and which need improvement? Excellent question. Everything that I show, I have done myself. The only thing I haven't done myself is the lean, like the final process. I did the chief justice litigation and they finished it. But even that, I have a finished, complete thing. So everything I teach works 100%. The only time you'll run into difficulty is Let's say you have your sovereign paperwork, your three letters, and you go into a bank. If that agent is ignorant, you may have to bulldoze them or, or nicely ask them who their ISO officer is. That's who's in charge of the international standards of operation. Uh, you want the signatory or the control officer. And that's where anytime you hit a snag of someone that is doing their job, but they're violating you, uh, you go up to that and the control officer is liable if they're not, if they're willfully negligent. Negligence is when they do it first, you inform them and they keep doing it. That's willful negligence. It removes their insurance bond. It makes that agent personally liable, as well as anyone above them who you notice who doesn't take proper action. Okay, Joe asks, if you work for a corporation and they want to test you for COVID and won't allow you to work without it, how would you handle that? I would quit and I'd litigate everyone who had anything to do with giving me an order that I had to do it. I would put their name and address up publicly where they live. I would encourage everyone who has an opinion about it to peacefully go to their home and knock on their door and talk to them about it. I'd give their phone number out. I would make their life such a living hell and <laughs> they need to never try and give me an order again because I'm not allowed to touch them. So all I can do, even if they infuriate me, is build the crap out of them go on shows, talk about what they did. I just did a video, War Crimes Against Mankind, where I recorded the litigation phone call to the manager of the Rexall Canada Post situation. And I told him if that lady's not fired, if the security guard isn't fired, I'm leaning him and everyone who had anything to do with being there um, the next time I walk in there and that they better leave me alone next time. And if they don't, again, I just won't spend money there, right? Like we have purchasing power. You don't need any of them. Anything you can do corporate, you can do unincorporated. So, just, just we, we, if anything, it's kind of nice they showed us a template 
for how to have a lot of nice stuff and for everyone to have wealth. But we just need to make that the standard everywhere now. There's a lot of things they do to impoverish certain countries so other ones benefit. Once everyone has their sovereignty, there's no more of that. Everything should be local. Like, like you can be globally connected and operate completely locally, right? Especially with the internet and everything. And then we just associate and that's how you bridge the, the pay system. And then the other thing is people do need to get organized with cybersecurity. Like you mentioned that there's company you can hire, uh, set up formal things that meet the standards. And the other thing is anything you launch as an unincorporated association, exceed the corporate standards with exception of rights violations. Right. Mm -hmm. So anytime we do anything, I'll try and meet all of the legal requirements, especially if it were, say, we were to build a house, zoning, uh, like safety stuff, anything that could cause harm, you want to try and abide by that. Right. If I were legitimately sick in this time, I might try and stay home right now if I had a flu or whatever, because I don't want to make people sick and maybe they're going to die. Right. Like, but as far as COVID, Matt, that's it. Um, it's just conditioning to try and have. As soon as a corporation thinks they can tell you what to do, we're living in World War II. Everything Hitler did to Jewish people was legal. Not lawful, but it's legal. It's like a gunfight in the Wild West. If the, if the two people consent, the sheriff supervises, they kill each other, oh well. You can do anything to anyone in a legal contract. That's why UFC exists. If I wanted to do a bungee jumping thing with no bungee cord, we could. As long as we all knew we were going to die and we agreed, there's nothing unlawful about that. And that's why knowing the law is so important. Silence is consent. No one can take or give rights. They can only be exercised or not by you. And that's why you got to know what they are and how to do it. And we templated it all because everyone hates studying and it's a lot of <laughs> yeah, so, well, Made it easy for everybody. Try to as much as possible. Yeah. Yes. Do you utilize trusts to form the society? Yes. Three or more people join a mutual consent is a trust or a society. Same thing. Yeah. Right. That's why you need three people, but the way we get you to set it up is two of the founding members are silent and you're the only signatory. And that gets rid of power struggles. If you want to set it up where yeah. you share, you could, but a lot of times that creates problems. Yeah, we do, the, we do something similar. So, um, okay, um, any opinions on the name assignment or name decree? Name assignment or name decree? I'm not sure what they mean. Like yeah. as far as how you're the spelling of your name you mean? Or? So Starship, do you want to speak? Where are you? I don't know why everyone's so shy. What's wrong with you guys tonight? <laughs> Starship, I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. No, nope, I'm I muted somebody else. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Oh, is your mic not working? You have silence. Um, you're going to have to type it. Nope, hold on a minute. Why is it I can't quite unmute you? Uh, all right, you have to type explanation of your question. Yes, Starship is still muted. For some reason, he has a stubborn unmute button. Okay, I'm going to go to the next question. Maybe Starship can add, um, elaborate more on his question. So let me go back up. Um, yeah. uh, let's see how to do, oh, let me go down to the bottom. Nope. Hold on a minute. Oh, okay. Hughes was earlier. In terms of travel, California has public law 280, which says tribes can't issue their own plates. Native American tribes in San Diego have had the police cars towed in California. Any suggestions? I would define yourself as sovereign rights held by indigenous power, and that doesn't apply to you. Okay. No. That sounds good. Basically, uh, all act and statute, even if they call it law, is a fraud. You absolutely. are the law. You are the sovereign law. You have every right. Anything a corporation can do, you could do. Anything they can issue a license for, you can do yourself, or they wouldn't be able to issue a license for it. So basically, licenses, all of that, are permission from a corporation to exercise a private law right you don't need their permission for in the first place. You have the right to travel with your own place. Now, the only thing is, if you were to cause harm and you have no insurance, do you have wealth? Can you cover that? Are you creating a liability, right? That's part of why I wouldn't want to drive without some sort of insurance, uh, although not necessarily insurance, but it, my understanding is we can form our own once it's five million, but insurance dispossesses title. So 
Well, I'd prefer just to have enough money set aside where you can settle if you did cause harm, right? But you have to think of those things because when you truly operate on a no harm standard, you have to think before you do anything. Is this potentially going to hurt anyone? And if it does, then you can't do it. Or if you're going to, you better be able to set it up in a way that no one's getting hurt because as soon as you hurt someone, they're going to come get you. Your private law won't defend you at all. When I punched the downtown business member in the face, I spent 10 days in jail, right or wrong, right? As soon as you cross that line, you, they're going to come get you. And you may get out. You may not be in trouble. You may be right. But if it comes to that, you're going to suffer some consequences. Okay. Um, I'm trying to catch up with some of these questions. Sorry. So, so I guess back to that, though, like you have the right, but if you do it, they're going to abuse you. That's where for me, once I have, say, 50 private security in front of me and behind me, and we have, say, 20,000 people we can call if they get out of line, then I'll challenge the system. Before that, though, I don't, I don't want to be the punch. Okay. Anybody else got any other questions? Woo. I'm trying to read. So when you guys type something like statements, I'm trying to read through them all. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. What do you recommend telling people to do as far as gathering witnesses and founding members as gatherings are fr frowned upon? Great question. Well, first of all, realize that a corporation can't give you an order. So I, I walk the wrong way down the aisles. I don't listen to anything that any of them say where it says to stand in a circle, I stand in front of it. Like, I just don't comply. I just don't. And if they tell me I have to, I tell them I can bill them. Like, I literally was at a grocery store and they were telling people they had to take a shopping cart because that was their way of counting. I informed the lady she couldn't. She got her manager. I him. He was wrong. He laughed at me. I called him a Nazi. I started yelling at the whole store. A bunch of people told me to shut up. I called them all the N-word. I said, you guys are all, and none of them were, were of ethnicity. They're all a bunch of white people. So I'm like, you guys are lining up. They're taking our freedom. You guys are all just standing there. I said, F you all. My wife, she walked the other way with the cart because she's like, oh, I know what's going on here. She doesn't like any of those antics, but I won't shut up. Silence is consent. So screw them. They're not telling me shit. The day a corporation thinks it has the right to tell me what to do is the day we're all really screwed. So that's why I'll just, I'll never back down to that at all. And I mean, just leave if, if, if you really have to. And the other thing is just record. <laughs> Video evidence is your best thing. Getting the six people, though, back to your question, sorry, I strayed. Um, the six people, you can either do friends or you can do where you just pay people to come show up and you do it together. And leave your cell phones at home so they can't track you and don't tell anyone. Yeah, they're using privacy, software. right? Like privacy. When I was first studying this, two things freaked me out: how much technology there is, and what do you do when they run all the technology. So the first concern I had was robots, all this technology, 5G, all this stuff coming, and even before all that. Then a, a tech buddy told me, "It's like every technology has a counter technology, right? They overrun us with with machines, EMP, pulse to plant." Right, like whatever it takes. There's, and I'm using a big example. I'm not saying do that, but the, every technology has a counter technology. And then the other thing is, like with them fighting terrorists and that in the news, the terrorists they just it's like the mob. They cover their mouth when they talk. And, you know, you go back to old school gangster type, mobster type. Keep the man off your back. The more legitimate you are at this, the more you should run it like you're a criminal. And, just, and not like a criminal, don't do anything criminal. <laughs> Privacy-wise, the more honest you are, the better your privacy better be. And if you have someone in your circle that's going to go run to the man and tell him that you're having a meeting, get that asshole out of your circle. Yeah, agreed. Um, so are there any suggestions for paying off student loan debt and for paying college education? Absolutely. Uh, order, well, in Canada, we send a letter to the finance minister and order him to discharge it as fiduciary. There are processes where you're accepted for value to do it yourself. I tell people not to do that because if you make a mistake, it's up to 14 years in prison per mistake per form, right? And also there is some conjecture whether you're authorized to discharge from that account because you're not the signing authority over it, even though you're who's under it. So what I do is with all of that, banking administrative, per, banking administrative process for debt proves there is no debt, so they can shove it. And if, they, <laughs> if anyone tries going after you for it, bill them for fraud. Again, it's a fraud. No one explains your legal ID, turns you into a corporation, stripped you of rights, means you're owned, dispossessed of property. Like, it's, it's such a criminal fraud. And then even in the legal system, your signature discharges the debt from the public trust. 
So the money you're paying is double billing. You're paying a second administrative fee on top of what's already been discharged from your signature because you're owned by the public trust. So no matter how you splice this, if you use accounting practices, if you use contract law practices, if you use banking administrative process for debt, it's all a fraud. Look up act and statute or the limitation of power to corporations, clear field doctrine, case law. So now we have to just understand we're dealing with criminals. So law isn't the issue. Legality is not the issue. It's how do we protect ourselves from criminals? And in Winnipeg, we have a little bit of that skin because there are bikers here. There's the mob. Before them, there's a lot of other gangs. There's IP. There's you name it, it's a really crazy city. So you have to deal with the police and the government or the corporations posing as government like you would any gang. First of all, your immediate circle, they're not allowed in. You don't talk to them, you don't associate with them. In my weed business, I've had people who work for corrections, like their father, he's like, oh, you know, I'd like my kids to come see you. They work for corrections. And right there, I'm like, they work for corrections, mother effer? I'm like, you better get away from me. I'm like, those fucking assholes. I'm like, sorry guys, I'll, I'll watch my language. I'm going back into pry prior old stuff, but, um, but it's like, I grew up on the street, so I always hated the system anyway, but even if you're not, even if you're pro-system and you don't see the problems to it, they are stealing from you. They're robbing your children well. Yeah. So this just protects you and gives you a shield so they can't. If you're very, like, just calm and you don't want to challenge the system, use it only for financial planning. Operate it like you would any estate trust. That, that's a good point. Good advice. Okay, art. I'm going to, I'm going to unraise your hand. No, actually, I'm going to, okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, liking what I'm hearing. Thanks for, for all the good information. Uh, does your banker's administrative process for debt um, help with people with mortgage debt? Excellent question. Technically, yes. But again, this is where I come back to. If it's something you're living in, don't mess around. Pay the bills. What I would do is if I had a home, I would continue to make the mortgage payments, pay it off. Once you get your society up, it should be easy for you to get enough money to give them their legal tenants, right? Just, just even it out. And then from there, own it under claim of right. Now, technically, would you be right to challenge it? Yes. From my understanding, banks sell the mortgage note in most cases. They're not even the holder in due course. Is what they're doing a criminal fraud? Do they generate the bond off of your signature as though they'd already given it? My understanding is yes. You know, the all bank profit is stolen money from people because they don't know how to claim it because they don't actually offer mm -hmm. any of their own money. So it all is counting trickery and yeah. the whole system is such a scam. But if you try and fight them, they'll send the armed people to your home and do you want that fight? Right. So, you know, and then the other thing to realize is if, it, if even without a mortgage, you don't own your property. If it's registered, you, you pledged it to the national debt. So you don't own it anyway. So I would just rent. I would rent where I'm at and I would buy land separate under my society or whatever, or decide to own it, but recognize that, you know, you, you could fight it, but they will send people. And unless you have private security that's bigger than them, you're challenging a gang when your gang is still pretty small. You know, it, 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 when I first moved to Winnipeg, I couldn't stand my grand against big gangs. I avoided them. But as I became more of a somebody, and I've always been a good guy. I've never, never killed anyone. I've never done anything really bad. I'm just always, I'm a bully bully, right? I'm a nerd. I grew up. If someone is a friend and someone's picking on them, I'll stand up for them. I'm that kind of guy. I saved a woman from being nakedly dragged into a guy's apartment from a big crackhead and I got thanked by the town. So just know when I talk, I'm not a bad guy. Um, but you have to have your own gang. You you have to, and, and not in a criminal sense, but in a privacy and a security and safety. Yeah. You know, and don't allow strangers into your circles. And anyone who's a rat or is a man. Keep them away. You know, anyone who acknowledges that corporate system above law and right is a danger. Those are the terrorists. Okay, thanks much. You bet. Okay, is um, is the process to create private society the same everywhere? Does it vary from country to country? No, this works globally. Once you found your society, your jurisdiction is global because contract law is global, as is indigenous rights and sovereignty. With that being said, there I'm sure there are some like China and a few places the the, the statehood or whatever they're operating under won't like that. But it's ever since World War II, Nuremberg trials, this is all well settled for a long time. Uh, Magna Carta, even though it was invalid because they had already signed over their title to the crown prior to that, was established in that. It's just and even if it wasn't established, we are our own law, we can establish it. 
All these guys are just people putting on their pants one leg at a time at home. Don't go fight them in the streets if we're going to fight them. Have private security go to their home at 5 a.m. like cops do. Cops don't go arrest a gang. They show up 20 guys when you're in your underwear at 4.30 in the morning unarmed. And they all yeah. right? and, and then they'll probably still smack you around for a while. So there are lawful processes to use. I don't mean vigilante stuff. I'm not talking go just round them up and string them up. None of that because it's going to come back worse. But if you're correct with lawful process, you can implement your own police force. There's a documentary on Netflix called No Country for Old Men. Now, I'm not endorsing that group or any of that, but it was a good example of how you can bring a large group of people in to say it's a town of 80 people and take over legal jurisdiction and yep. uh, within lawful standing. Now, they did it a little out there and they made it that they freaked everyone out. But if you act the same, if you try and amalgamate, if you're not you know, taking over the police and walking around with M16s, like really there should not, in Canada, we're not supposed to be able to carry so much as a knife because there would be premeditated intent to cause harm. So let's apply that to police, right? In England, most police just have their billy club. You know, I think some units have guns if they need to call yeah. them, but, but yeah. your street patrols don't, right? No. Like, there was a soldier at the, uh, it was back maybe six, seven years ago, but he was an army sergeant, a really big, uh, beautiful African-American guy in full soldier uniform. And he was screaming at police that were beating up peaceful protesters. And he's like, you guys, what's wrong with you? These are, they don't have weapons. You guys are beating them. You're armed. Like, what's wrong with you? And that's where there shouldn't be an organized military force against the people, period. You know, I appreciate it if the police need a SWAT team. So if there's a guy in a gun tower, you can deal with him. But day to day, police shouldn't be armed at all. What kind of pussy needs all that, all that gear, right? I challenge cops. I don't even have a vest, right? Yeah, especially here. And even, against, even against women. Believe you me, I've had seven cop cars. It's horrible. Anyway. Um, so just a, a thought, Tim Potter, he mentions Dale in Detroit, the guy I told you from Detroit Threat Management. Yep. He actually does training. He does do training. And that's a good thought there, Tim, especially with, with what Marcel just said. Mm -hmm. Okay, Blue, I, I can't believe you've learned to raise your hand. Jesus, how many years has this been now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody saw, you now know how to do it. No more cheating for you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, I wanted to address, uh, people always do this uh, questioning if, about their mortgages and paying it off or being liable for it and all. My real question is like, well, what about people who don't have mortgages? I want a piece of property. Let's start from the raw and say, let's go get the property instead mm -hmm. of like trying to save something that's a pain in the ass. So what do you have to say about starting that? Starting fresh. You mean like starting fresh? Yeah, absolutely. Paying cash yeah. or not paying? How are you think? Let me give me some, give us some terms here. What, what's the terms? Well, well, the, 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 well, that's exactly right. What's the terms? <laughs> what's the terms? <laughs> Basically, my answer to that is as long as the legal system exists to keep them off your back, you're going to have to pay the property tax randomly, period. That, that's, I mean, you don't have to, but as soon as you don't, you're going to get into an armed conflict. Right, well, like they're gonna send someone with a gun to, to make you- Well, here's the, here's the point, okay? Yep. If you can establish a loyal title, yep. then the fact of the matter is if you put, this is a fact, yep. if you can establish your no trespassing signs on that piece of land, we're talking about property, then they can't even go on that land for the equitable relief because it's a trespass. For sure. And I agree with what you're saying. This is where, as far as my society goes, for the first 10 years, we did it more as a product. Now I'm entering into, we're looking at an island right away. Um, it's in an indigenous community. It's privately owned. I'm going to help them turn that into sovereign, like go through the paper process and that. Um, so we're going to cross those roads as we go. Um, but my plan is to pay, if they, if, if they send it, whatever, I'll protest and duress but I would pay it just because wherever we are, I don't want them coming. Now, if it's a piece of property that I'm not living on, I'll mess with them all day, right? It's just for me, I'm at the point I've pushed it pretty far. I don't want to be near them if I can avoid it without being on. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not at that place. Like I don't have guns, like nothing. Like, but I just, that's where it's at. Like if things don't get better over the next one to two years of people really rising up, I'm organizing militia. Like, I mean, if they bring tanks and streets, yeah. we're gonna do going into people's homes, forced vaccinations, the smart dust in the vaccinations, tracking everyone, 5G, you can't go anywhere. You know, there's nothing really left then, you know? Like if, if they wanna take it there, 
that's when I'll go get guns and I'll go fight. Um, but I really hope that enough people exercise the correct process. It doesn't come to that. I don't think we're there yet. We have a year before the vaccine. You can kick a lot after you, you know, like, and, and there's still more they have to do beyond that. But it is, it, it's the real shit right now. Like, it's not really even so much about paying bills or not is, you know, are people going to be able to eat in six months to a year? You know, everyone better get their food supply. I believe in the States, they're starting to take seeds away, a third. Like in they, ha they have done that. Yeah, they've yeah. considered it non-essential and they have been throwing away a lot of food. Um, and we've seen, also I think Salem, so Salem's from a farming area and I think he mentioned about it being low solar, a low solar year, I think, or something like that. So it will be hard to grow food for some of us too. For sure. As um, someone so, in the marijuana anyway, industry, you just get grow bulbs it, done. It's <laughs> interesting. Oh, I, I was just making <laughs> a joke, grow bulbs. The worst case, if the sun's not doing it, that that doesn't mean that. Uh, okay. Aren't you worried about everyone start to grow hemp around you? Because, I mean, hemp's getting big, right, in Canada? Uh, in, in Canada, they've made it illegal for anyone to grow even a single plant. Oh my God. So, so they've made it that they basically the dispensaries here are charging 150 bucks for a quarter of oh seven grams. Where, where for my dispensary, it's about 50. And I'm not mentioning wow. the dispensary because I'm not trying to promote it. I prefer to keep that separate from my work. Um, yeah. But, but that, um, that was a weird thing. When I was a kid in England, they made pipe screens illegal. Yeah. So it was pretty funny. So you can imagine my grandmother drank tea and one day I needed a screen for my pipe. So I freaking, I stole it out of her tea strainer. And I never forget, she's like, we've got rats. <laughs> that's <laughs> <little weird>. eating rats. <laughs> and again, that's where like, even though I'm under private law, I do run it so that I'm protected. They couldn't get to me even if they wanted to. But even the times they do call, I'm not shy about it. I am protected. They can all kiss my butt. And that's where once you really know you're right, everyone can kiss your butt if they don't like it. You know, you're, you're, being authentic and being a people pleaser are seldom the same thing. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Grand solar minimum. Thank you, Salam. Nice. Um, okay. Anybody else? Got, okay. What's these ones say? Oh, my goodness. I've got a book to read. <laughs> I'll answer questions as long as you guys like. I just remember, though, I do have a bunch of documents that I can show you guys yet in some files. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Show us some documents. Okay. okay. Um, so what I'm showing you guys here, uh, we did a How to Found Your Own Sovereign Society Freedom event about a year ago, where we invited mm -hmm. people from the public that had never done this before and got them to actually fill out the paperwork and we recorded it. So that's on uh, peacemakersociety.org. It's also on uh, when you get peacemakersociety.org. It's the first video. I will start talking slower again. I'm speeding up. Okay. Um, Hold on a second. When you say record it, where are you recording it? On your own site? Um, no, basically we did an event that I paid uh, like a film production team to come out and film it and then they edited it into a two hour, two hour and 20 minute video and then we have some musical stuff in between and some different things and whatever. Yeah, but you said everybody did their paperwork and then you recorded it. Where was oh, it? Oh, yeah, well, it was at Creative Manitoba. We just hosted an event and we had oh. about 10 people come out and they each filled out their own paperwork searched oh, the main, did it all, had the witnesses. It's basically a live example on, like your friend said, how do you get five or six people together to do it? We show in that video exactly what an event looks like if you're going to do it. You could do it oh. in a home, a coffee house, whatever. Um, but it is six people total, including yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you're in an area where they're restricting how many people, do it as a, a low ops. Realize you're not breaking the law, first of all. You're not... Yes. Legality is not law. You're not breaking any law. It's not a court offense. They have no right to even tell you that. So, but when you do it, leave your phones at home. Aside from what you're recording with, right? Like, but that's it. Oh yes, we're getting to documents here. Okay, so back on track. Let me close these. Uh, one second, sorry. Every time I go check it up, the computer is going to be okay. Yeah, so I can. This see. is our yeah. freaking ticket clipboard. So this is a clipboard. Basically, just so you guys know, we had teams go out giving out uh, freedom tickets from our university. It just has a university, says freedom ticket on it, explains that we educate all in unincorporated rights. Um, we give that to people, and then we have a script where we explain legal ID makes a corporation, blah, blah, blah. But we're at 80% of people are interested in this. Day in, day out, 8 out of 10 people would take the card. No, 9 out of 10 people took the card. 8 out of 10 people would give their email to us. 
So those are the numbers we're working with. So I'll just move this over here. So I'll just show you guys here. Um, I'll send you copies of all this, Jackie. Uh, this is part of all the course and what comes with it. So um, this is Forgotten Freedom and Sharing Our Success. It's just an article that we had published. Uh, this is our card. So if you guys, anyone ever needs to reach us, 204-698-2684. I don't always have that phone on me, but the voicemail is always on. So you can always leave it uh, in a message if you need. Um, this is membership benefits, being a competent heir. Uh, defense of property in the Criminal Code of Canada. This is that document where it says everyone in peaceful possession of personal property under claim of right uh, and that you can hire people to protect. It gives you your rights under private security law. Um, this is just a thing we did about elections and voting being slavery, uh, just about how it's all corporate, why, all reference. Um, this is just our sign-up sheet for that. Um, equality is your unalienable right. Uh, Supreme Court decisions on the right to travel. Uh, so everyone wondering if you have the right to travel, this is Supreme Court of the United States, uh, letting you guys know that you do. Uh, this is just one of our flyers, just on slavery terms and um, this is when we did lectures back in 2014, uh, which basically turned into the event that's on the website now. So that's basically what people are getting to see. Um, that's the script. This explains the hierarchy of laws, so law, natural law, laws of maxims, sovereign, contract law, treaties. So again, you see all the way at the bottom, citizen. Again, for, you guys know this stuff already, but for people who are a little newer, uh, a lot of people don't realize human means monster. Uh, it's actually a diminished capacity that you have no soul. Um, and again, that ties into your sovereignty. So anyone calling you a human is saying you have no rights because you're not under whatever created you, blah, blah, blah. And again, I'm not a part of any religion specifically. I'm just, this is what we learned. Um, this is just legal slavery, direct taxation on labor, definition of slavery, who owns the law, you do, many kinds of law, uh, one foundation of them all. Actually, I'll read this one. This is what's on the shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, so who owns the law? You do. There are many kinds of law. There's one foundation of them all, natural law. Supersedes contract law, canon law, act and statute. All law is different, yet built on this one principle, which is the foundation of all law. Where do my rights come from? In law, the universe and you. Put your living soul into your flesh and blood animals. Again, I said that before. We already gave that, but it's here for you guys, and I'll send that through to you as well. Um, I'm not trying to skip through these. I just, for me, I've read these so many times. Uh, this is the actual act that references Canadians being owned as chattel property. It's the 1985 Canadian Ownership Control and Determination Act. Uh, there would be something similar in the States as well. Um, this is Canada Incorporated on the Security and Exchange, and they're actually listed in Washington, D.C. So the Government of Canada is a USA-based corporation. That's their actual business address, so I, I found that funny. Um, this is about how Vatican, the Vatican Church owns title to all birth certificates, basically. Um, it, it goes through that um, in that system, which is a fraud anyway. But And then VIP Empire, this is what everyone will be running the councils in that uh, as we all team up. And we can always rename it something else. I don't care of VIP Empire. I just pretty much, I, I work alone a lot and I'm just creating everything. So as like now, this big jump that's come on and them shutting everyone down, people are a lot more serious about this than they were, say, a year ago. Um, yeah. And then these are just give outs. Um, property registration gives away title. It's called Hypothecate, Black Law Dictionary, 7th edition, to pledge property as security as collateral for a debt without delivery of title or possession. And then just talks about when Canada went bankrupt, same thing in the States, uh, 1933. Um, just information. Uh, so Canada, the ordered income tax abolished in 1950 because uh, the federal government is not supposed to directly tax. It's supposed to be up to the provinces under that system. Oh, that's interesting. And then just who owns the law? You do. This is that actual brochure. This is our shirt on a poster. Um, and then just so you understand how it works, Peacemaker Society is just recognized undefeated results. The university is the blank template so you guys can do that yourself. And then once you have your own society, you are the unincorporated economy and nothing corporate can ever shut you down, order you to close what they do. It's a million bucks a shot and they're ending their career. Again, not that you're going to make money from me most of the time, um, but it's the way to stand up. And if your society has money, it's easy to fight back. Because again, if you have, this is the way I put it to people. If you have a thousand members to I Love Puppies Society at 20 bucks a month, you got $20,000 a month tax free. It's really not hard to generate a lot of money with your own stuff. Um, and then now I'm gonna go into the other one here. 
which is our actual clipboard. So this is the actual event booklet that the people got who attended our recorded event. So here is the actual, let me see if I can open this. So this is the blank uh, schedule, pay schedule uh, when you're hiring people, affidavit of service. So everything is templated for you guys. So you just literally, if this is someone you're hiring for your society, you would write the name of your society here. They're independent, you're not liable for them. You fill in the blank, boom, you both sign it, it's done. And we've made it very, very basic. Here, I'll slow down so you guys can look at it a bit. This talks about how you're not liable for each other, title or position to represent it on. And this goes with the independent contractor agreement. The reason we did it that way is you'll hire a lot of people for a lot of different roles. So the contractor agreement covers everything. And then this outlines their specific duties and what you're paying them for, basically, in whatever you guys decide to do. And then uh, the contract agreement, lien instructions, uh, your blank society oath documents. I'll open this up so you guys can see. Um, you guys can customize this to be whatever you want. We just created a starting point. If you don't like what it says, you can always change it. Um, but again, I swear not to cause unlawful harm to life, liberty, property, or rights of any man or woman on earth. Again, simple. And then we have miscellaneous in the event anything's wrong, the rest still applies. This is in contract. If you make a mistake, you can avoid it. We have that covered. Um, dictionary definition of act and statute, uh, 1893 Dictionary of Arts and Sciences, Statutory Law, Legal Code, defined as the undoing of God's law. I haven't seen the actual dictionary, so if for any reason that's not 100%, I apologize, but to my understanding, I believe that's correct. Um, this is the debt letter. So this one letter gets you out of any debt. So attention, whoever the company is, date, whatever your thing is, the alleged amount owing. It uh, just says we're happy to pay if it's a valid debt, but we want them to prove the debt. So we need the original contract, the original accounting. And then this is the first one I did. So the debt was only 400. So we made the fee schedule 500. So if they contacted us again, they would owe us more than he owed. But since then I've upped it to a million. Um, again, this is an older document there. Um, but you can do what you want. Uh, there are things in the Uniform Commercial Code for violation amounts. So mm -hmm. you can always cross-reference the legal amounts into your private law stuff. Because you could say they owe you a trillion dollars. Well, what's the validity to that, right? Yeah. Um, to me, I go a million because that's what an insurance bond is worth. That, that's their basic insurance bond should be a million. So that's why I did it that way. But people can always adjust it. Uh, how to place liens, bill generation, send a letter. And we had people that work at law firms go through all that with us. The law courts actually traded on Dun & Bradstreet as a corporation, again, which means they're not a real law court. Uh, and then this is the corporate Peacemaker Society Corporation posing as government control officer and agent accountability program. This is my chief justice document convicting every legal agent of being guilty of a criminal fraud against all mankind and it's a heinous behavior and blah, 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 blah. So this just outlines all of it and our court of record already proves that. So that's in there as well. Those are the following pages. Uh, outlines, validation of the debt, verification, technical stuff in there you guys need. You don't have to go run around and find it. Obviously, due diligence, everything. You know, if you're going to do it, check it out. Make sure we didn't make a mistake. Our stuff works. It's foolproof. But within that, it just being competent means you always check out your own stuff. The notary protest process, that's the private people's remedy using notaries against the legal system. But most notaries are also a lawyer. So it's really hard to get notaries to help. But that's where three witnesses replaces a notary. Oh, okay. If you have three so, witnesses, that makes the court admissible, so you don't even okay. need notaries. If people want to know if you can do anything with this, this is the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce that we successfully joined as an unincorporated association for both the university and Peacemaker Society. And it did, I quit a week later because they were misspelling her name and I flipped out on them. Okay. But I just wanted to prove anything you could do as a business, you can do as an unincorporated association. Mm -hmm. This is a proof of service form when you're serving people. This is Peacemaker Society, just our membership dues thing that we paid it proving we did it. Uh, validation of the debt, the banking process, we have it here. Again, when you look at this, short process, right? The language is big, language is complicated, but if you have a paper with it on it already, it's wicked simple, and that's what we did. Uh, this is the right to travel. Uh, this is uh, maybe from the King's Bible, maybe. This one, uh, no, it's not from the King's Bible, but it references right to travel in Canada anyway. Um, I was mentioning before about the UCC having outlines for what to bill for different violations. I found this. This one's not ours, uh, but I just, it's a good example of 
how you can do it. Again, you see how we did ours, but I like the way that set that up. This is the affidavit of identity document. So this is an actual lawyer, her affidavit. This isn't my affidavit, this is her attesting. And the only reason she did it is because I was using another lawyer to go after the 80 million that I had billed. He didn't know the, like, he knew I was going after it. He knew his contracts of service, but he didn't understand fully the sovereignty side of it. So he said he need, I needed an identity document. I said, I don't use legal ID because of my private law society. So he confirmed with the law society what was needed in a document to meet all the terms of a valid legal document, even though it's a private document. So this meets all the terms for photo ID, for a passport, for everything. But I still bring my legal ID because most agents don't have a clue what this is. But if they violate me, this proves I can build them and I can end their career. So uh, that's why I bring it with it. I shouldn't have to show legal ID. This replaces it, but the bank's still going to want to see the old whatever. But it references all the old ID, a photo, thumbprint. Uh, they wouldn't do it at first because they were worried that I would switch, like someone could switch the photo. So that's why we did a thumbprint over both of it and then laminated. So that way it's a sealed document. It can't be altered or changed. And if it was, it would be obvious because of the thumbprint. Um, this is when we were invited to learn how to do community courts by David Harper of the Creation. This is the invite they sent us. Um, and I have the full recording of that on our YouTube list. So they actually oh, let us record that. So you guys can go through and listen. That would be great. This yeah. five or six segments. And again, that's on the Peacemaker Society original live video content YouTube playlist. Uh, there's about 400 some odd videos. Most are from us, some are from other people. So if it's really good stuff. And then this is just, people talk about earning a living and how they're gonna do with this. So I break down sovereignty sales and sovereignty management consultants. Once you do this and you're fully versed at it, you become the equivalent to like an insurance agent except for in sovereignty and unincorporated rights. So there's a million ways that you can earn a living from this, getting people out of debt, advocating for people uh, through society membership, through programs you wanna run. Um, and it just outlines basically different ways that you can do that. Um, this is actual PayPal for be getting paid from different clients. So people can see you can make lots of money at this. It's not hard to get someone with a million bucks who owes 50 grand to give you five grand to get them out of it, right? And then to give them title to their property in that. Um, this is the actual TD Canada Trust Merchant Services. So we're able to apply for merchant account status as an unincorporated association. And then this is resolution of officers, members, unincorporated association for organizations, lodges, and societies. So again, uh, if you go to smaller banks, they're not even going to know what you're talking about. But TD, they're pretty good. If you talk to them, they should know. I'm not trying to endorse them. I just, they're the only one that I had no problems with. Yeah. Bank of Montreal at first approved us, but then turned us down just because they, they were close with the Department of National Defense and stuff. There's some, some bias in that. Uh, CIBC did open it, but then through trying to get credit, they told me I had to do taxes and I flipped out on them with litigation and I'm not allowed in their branches anymore because they were afraid I was going to lose them. <laughs> so I, I still have a few banks that I have good relationships with, uh, but uh, there are some that are better than others for sovereign rights. Sorry, this is here. Let me flip that. Uh, this is the Winnipeg Indigenous Accord. I have this in here just to show how full of shit the legal system is that they honor any Indigenous rights. Your name in all capital letters means they're stripping you of title. We are all Indigenous to Earth. Your private law rights are Indigenous rights. So every time the legal system pretends they're doing the Indigenous stuff under legality is them just spitting in everyone's face and laughing. Uh, the guy on the $50 Canadian bill killed the, the federal bank in Canada. That's why we have a Bank of Canada. But they outsourced the printing of the currency to two German companies. So we still have hyperinflation and the national debt, even though we were supposed to have our own bank. So it's just no matter where you go, it's all full of it. Um, and then this is how to do an affidavit. This is the affidavit we did when we sent our documents, a general instructions, uh, CIBC. Okay, we're going in a circle now for that. And then in here is the actual document or the actual uh, booklet that you get in that as well. So. That's kind of the documents that I'll show you guys for now as far as that goes, but I just wanted to show you guys, it definitely works. It's a real thing, like. It looks really good. I, I'm, I'm excited to check everything out. So Beautiful. does any, anybody have any questions? Okay, so here's one. So when you open up a bank account, are you required to have any number at all? Any number? 
Yeah, no, like, no, there's no register. There's no incorporation at all. You are registering for the bank account, but when I sign it, I sign Marcel Bissett, All Rights Reserved Peacemaker Society Law. So okay. again, under Uniform Commercial Code one 308 you can always reserve private law in any commercial contract. So I'm applying for the account. They set it up as a business account, but it's a sovereign association. Now, when it's in the computer system, it is in all capitals, and that is incorrect. It should yeah. be spelled normally, but they cannot physically enter it that way. But they're the ones who are liable for that, not me. I've noticed them correctly, that default in their system, that in no way diminishes my rights because I've reserved my rights under my own law, which is already acknowledged by the legal system, which again is just the three letters. Ideally, if you can get an identity document, that's great. But even without that identity document, the three letters with your legal ID. What a, so oh, with a legal ID, what about with your SIN number? Do you use? I don't use that anymore. The only time I use that is when I do my taxes. So I get my rent money back because I have zero income personally every year. I could be on welfare if I wanted. I'm not. Back in the day when I was poor, I was on social assistance. And I, the only reason that I don't take advantage of those is I don't like being treated like a piece of crap for a couple bucks. I don't need it, right? And so, so, and for anyone who's worries about people preying on the system, they generate new digital currency out of every signature. So the, there is no real money in it. So you can't milk that system or abuse it because they literally generate credits out of thin air based on your signature through the trust. In terms of your bank account, do yeah. they, did you have a SIN number attached to that? No. No, no. okay. So now, um, Hugh has a couple of questions. Hugh, do you want to un unmute yourself and ask the questions so we don't just hear my voice all the time? <laughs> Where are you? Okay, um, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so the first question I had was, uh, what, are you, what is your um, opinion on holding title to automobiles? Good question. Uh, basically, the, the vehicle that I have is covered under claim of right. Now, the only problem is when I went in to try and insure it with all rights reserved, unregistered, unincorporated, the insurance company will not do it. I have to sign over title to them in order for them to insure it. So my truck is uninsured. Uh, my, my plates are private without insurance on them. But I really, I've used them twice for like a three minute drive because I just, personally, I'm in this to keep myself safe. And I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so I really want to build a wealth empire that helps everybody. So when I first started this, the first four or five years, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the system. I got in physical fights. I advocated. If you watch our videos, for the first five years, I recorded almost every instance. So you can see live. Believe me, I put in the work. But there's a point where you're going to martyr yourself if you push it too far. Um, it was at the point I was threatening to build police. They'd already beaten me up. I'd been arrested for, you know, I'm going to put the cops down with Juana because I was trying to build the police cadets that's starting to. And uh, I told the cop, I'm going to take everything you have. I was really mad. And as you, as you can guess, I don't get scared too easy. Um, I would have been punched out. I didn't care. I was like, I'm going to take everything you have. And he just sat me down quiet. No one else around. He said, I'll come find you and you'll be in the ditch. And I'll take you. Gladly. So, so that's where you have to realize you're dealing with criminals. And it, Jackie, you drove without a license. And obviously, no one tried killing you. I don't think anyway. I know you got arrested. And I don't think it was that extreme for you. So it's a matter you may have an OK experience with it. You may not. I'm just not willing to take the personal risk to just try and travel somewhere that they're going to get all up in my business. It's just I have too much responsibility. But initially, when I started this, I was willing to throw my body on the plane sort of thing. So it depends. Are you willing to get arrested or not? If you're not willing to get arrested, you should probably get insurance and a license and do it with all rights reserved. And then if you're given a speeding ticket or anything that you did not cause a tort offense, you bill that officer for fraud. I've gone up to police while they're giving a ticket, handed the person they're giving the ticket to my card and said, you can bill them for fraud. And the cop just looks at me, oh, it's like, wow, you're a criminal dude, sorry. Like, you know, most of the things I've done have been very peaceful and haven't escalated. But if you push it too far, it can. So that, that's basically my advice. If you're okay with, it's kind of like the movie Battle in Seattle. They're all about to go protest and the guy organizing says, anyone willing to get arrested, put up your hand. Okay, great. Anyone not, no problem. We're gonna need people to get us out of jail. We need lawyers, we need this, we need that. So, you know, most police even aren't gonna go ballistic on you. You know, they, they might arrest you, but they really are there to, they're, they're a private security force mostly of Freemasons, from my understanding, that's there to really 
clamp down on anything that would have challenged their illegitimate authority because they know they're a gang. They joke about it in my face, the whole department. I walked into the room, I'm like, there's a room full of willful negligence. And then five minutes later, they put a meth head in the cell and the attack. But I pinned them and it was fine. I was fine. But, but yeah, so well, just pick how, your back. How, like, how long, how, can, how far can you go back? Like if you were violated on some level um, and they uh, either told your car or ticketed you, how, 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 how many years can you go back? For sure. Uh, well, this is where our court of record right now goes back 11 years. And I don't believe there's a, a limitation on securities fraud. That's what all of this is, is securities fraud. They're, they're generating financial instruments that are worth money in a fraudulent manner. And it's, it's a very serious offense. It's up to 14 years in prison per offense, even in the legal code. Um, and that's where working under the Public Utility Board, I got to see that. So anytime that happens, get in touch with the control officer of their department, get them to try and discipline them. You can litigate all of them. Once you have your private law fee schedule, you can bill them, you can lien them. Um, but again, it's probably not gonna pay you. But if you're doing that work and you have a society, someone's gonna give you money to support that, right? And you can set up the program like a co-op structure. So much comes in, a little bit goes to this, a little bit goes to that. Um, but it, really driving and, and all of that is a really sticky one because that's what they're out looking for, right? Like, for me, even before I got into this, because I was in weed, I walk everywhere. I don't go on bikes. I don't get in cars if I can avoid it, because then you're in a vehicle that they feel they have jurisdiction over. Pretty much, you want to be the quietest person in the room and just go about your business day to day. Um, you know, Generally speaking, when I'm out, I wear a hat, sunglasses. I don't interact with people. If I see rights abuses, I'll pipe up for a minute, but then I get the heck out of there too before they go and call whoever to come bully me, right? Like, so it's just, you got to have some street smarts in this. And you know, you're dependent. Your level of how big are you? How many people do you know? How much law do you know? And then just really your comfort level. And, and I'll stop there because I'm kind of repeating myself. I, I wish I could give you an answer that yes, you have the right, you can go do it, they can't touch you. But a criminal can decide to break the rules at any time and they are criminals. So that's where it's, it's tough. You have all the rights you can enforce. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's well, really- one, one lesson that I'll, I'll share from my pre oath days in Winnipeg is when I first got to the downtown community, there were a lot of independents and gangs that were earning their living from a, a block or two downtown. Um, and I wasn't directly involved, but everyone knew me, so they let me hang out and stuff. And there were times there'd be six or seven leaders of gangs sitting down in a restaurant deciding if they're all gonna go to war or not because one guy has too many guys on the street making too much money, it's cutting someone else's pocket. But what you learn is all you can really hope to do with this is get big enough no one can squish you. Yes. <laughs> this idea that one group's going to take over the whole world is full of it because there's always another group that's powerful too. And once you hit a certain level, no one can stop you. Once you're big enough, like for me, I've already signed all of our manuals into law. If I die, it goes on. So right now, we may not have the administrative board, but over the next six months, as those all get set up, whatever happens to me, the legacy lives on, right? And that's where having a private trust when you die the next signatory takes over the trust so you skip probate and that's how rich people keep all their assets handed down generationally in a legacy in a private law unincorporated society when i opened the bank account at cibc it had been 15 years since anyone had opened that type of bank account and they had to get someone from their head office in toronto to be on the phone who even knew what it was it's just not known anymore but this knowledge is what everyone needs because it makes you equal with them and once you're big enough if you had a private security force equal to the police in your city, it makes it hard for them to come mess with you. And I'm not saying you have to do anything, but say police are coming, your private security is in between you and them. Police can't go through them to get to you lawfully, right? So it's just, you just gotta become big enough that they can't switch you. And then not even a size thing, once your privacy is in place, they don't even know where you are. When we started this, I was smaller, like our organization, and they didn't, you know, when I had warrants, it was two years. I went about my life daily, right? And it wasn't anything major. I knew when we got to court, it would be sorted out. I sent notices. I did all the stuff. And that's why when it went to court, they couldn't say anything because I had noticed them already previously. So I don't know. I kind of went off topic there, but I'll, I'll go back to questions. All right. Mike, your hand's up again. I I wanna know, where's the little stick with the yellow hand? Oh, it's right here. Oh, because that's the only one I respond to. The other one I was ignoring. That's 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, oh, the, the question is simply, you said you also use or you also have or you refer to your legal identity ID card. What is that? Basic, what is your... Good question. Uh, you know what? Let me just grab an ID. So I've shown you guys already the affidavit of identity, those three documents. So this is my legal ID now. This does replace the old ID. Oh, okay. um, but if I just bring this into a bank, they look at it like, what the heck? Even though in this document, it does reference my old legal ID. Um, so if you notice here, it references my birth certificate, references my liquor control card, it references the old legal ID. But what I do is I don't renew it. So let me just show you here. Okay. So my old ID, I keep in a little whatever here. Um, so this is my driver's license, but it's about 15 years old. They don't even use this kind anymore. This isn't actually accepted as valid legal ID anymore. Um, but I keep it because it's something that was previously. But again, I go off my new document. And then the other document they have is my old liquor control commission. But again, this isn't valid anymore either. Um, the social insurance number, I don't show unless I'm doing taxes. Um, which again, isn't really doing it. I'm getting a rebate. And I do that because I put that money into society thing. And other than that, I just have my health card. And that's it. And that's just so I can use a hospital if I needed to. Um, so well, I so, well, interesting thing is that your, uh, um, your ID, so to say, let's see, I, I've kind of lost my train of thought. Sorry. I'll well, get back to it. <laughs> um, I'll go back to what I was reading before, actually, when you reminded me to slow down because uh, of the computer thing. So. In the identity document, it just says that the unregistered, unincorporated man and living soul, known as Marcel Riley Bissett, and you notice they use the proper punctuation on Marcel Riley Bissett, it's not the all caps, they're acknowledging me the man, uh, reclaimed all unalienable rights as of September 3rd. He holds all his rights as sovereign rights held by Indigenous power. As per cured claim of right, the living man, Marcel Riley Bissett, now operates under the jurisdiction of Peacemaker Society law. The birth certificate still exists, but Marcel Riley Bissett no longer contracts his private unalienable rights to be governed under act or statute, but rather as an unregistered, unincorporated flesh and blood man and living soul, which is now bound to Peacemaker Society sovereign oath as per lawful excuse via claim of right and is in harmony with corporate law, common law, and natural law. So because we're correct to all three, this does replace legal ID, but I, as a courtesy to them, I show them the old one so they can still piece it together. But I don't need that old legal ID. Really, I should just show this, but I do them that courtesy because even if like now I went and got a driver's license with all rights reserved, on principle, I don't, but I could. And it doesn't diminish my rights as long as I've reserved them, right? right. Your rights exist in contract as long as you've kept them. And if you don't, then you've signed them away. And that's why... You, you just have to know contract law, really, and it's just adding a couple words to your signature, right? Just so, so the point there in, uh, that I brought back to my mind yeah. is that the, any kind of ID card that the government uh, issues uh, has expiration date, which basically tells you right there that this is securities fraud because they use it as a security. Yeah. And that's why you have to have it renewed because they have to tag it again and make some more money on it. For sure, for sure. But but that's where, again, if you reserve your rights in it and they violate, you can still build. Everyone thinks because you have legal ID, it gives up your rights. It doesn't. Well, it does if you don't reserve them. But if you reserve them like I do and we teach, you can do all of it. Yeah. The, the only reason I don't is a moral objection. But I do have a private holding company. That's what I'll lease space under, right? So that way our society name isn't even in there, right? Like other things I'll put under our society name if I want it to be. Um, the odd time I'll rent someone in my own name, but usually I use one of the two. And then all my ID, all everything, all has our society headquarter virtual office address. The reason I like virtual offices is because even if the police show up there, it's someone else's business that you're not even at. Chase it all day, right? Like, and again, no one's chasing me, but uh, just in privacy, that's why I like using a virtual office as your home address. Excellent. Gotcha. Thank okay. You. Yes, Sarah, go ahead. Uh, let me make sure you're unmuted. <laughs> oh, 
Um, so how, how do, what does it look like, uh, Marcel, when you um, reserve your rights on, like, you know, I know for sure that my way of looking at it is, this is, I'm going to go ahead and do this because in my heart, this is what I need to do. I feel that this is the right thing to do. But at the same time, I know that it's going to be lots of people that need to catch up to this. And while those, everyone else is catches up, I'm going to have to go along with the fiction up there. What I call fiction. One day when it catches up, it's going to be like, it's going to stop being fiction because everybody's going to recognize that it's a fiction. But while that's happening, what is it going to look like for me to go and get my license? What do I have to sign in to get my license and be right to all the laws? Excellent question. So what I'm going to do is Thank you. just grab my, I have a folder, so I'm just going to grab my document. Here we go. Okay, so here I have our original founding documents. I'm just going to go to the signature so I can show you. Let me find it here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Okay, so this is our CIBC paperwork here. So I'm going to show you whatever you're doing, you don't even have to tell them you're reserving rights. Okay, I've been in custody, being let out of prison, writing all rights reserved beside my signature. Like, you don't have to tell them you're doing that at all. They don't even have to realize you're doing it for it to be valid. So all you do is when you sign, let me see if I can get this in. So here's my signature. So all you do is sign your name the way you normally would. You don't even have to have of the family or anything, just normal capitalization. And then you just put all rights reserved, peacemaker society law, except for you would put your society, obviously. But that's it. That's all it takes. You know, everyone thinks you got to do a huge thing. As long as you do that, they can have be held liable for violating. And it's just adding that to your signature. It's like seven words, 10 words. But yeah, that's it. As long as you do that, you have your rights intact in a contract. And that's it. Okay. And, and don't tell them you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I mean, if it's a heated thing, I mean, if it, when I'm going to my taxes, I just do it. I, it's something that I do for everything, even if I'm endorsing a check, anything, because that's what keeps me under my jurisdiction, right? You have to reserve it in every single contract you do with anything. If I'm doing phone service, if I'm doing a cell phone contract, anything. And I give them all our society headquarters address, even if it's to me personally. Uh, that's where my income tax bill is every day. No one should ever know where you live unless you trust them with your life. I agree. Yeah. Okay, Hugh. Hugh? Okay, I was trying to make sure I was unmuted. Okay, so I have three questions. Um, I, I wanted to know what your thoughts are on the um, assumed name certificate, on the... Um, the authentication of the uh, birth certificate and um, a, a common law name change. I, I guess what I'm curious about is, is like, are you, are you talking, because when, let me just start off on, on a similar lens, but a little bit different. Um, when you do your own society, you do your own documents, Matt. When you're doing the, the legal documents, they will be whatever they normally are. You're just signing with all rights reserved. Like when I get a bank card, it's still just a bank card, right? But I just sign all rights reserved beside my signature under my society law, like I just showed. And that's really all you do in everything. Whatever form you're filling out to register for that ID or piece of whatever, you just put all rights reserved beside. Because again, it's just corporate contracts. You have the right to reserve rights in every contract. And anyone who would mislead you on that is a criminal fraud and they're liable. Just record them telling you that it's wrong and go after it. Litigation-wise, peacefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I need to rephrase the question. Um, okay. So a lot of people here are doing, I don't know if they're doing um, assumed name certificates in Canada, but a lot of people are doing assumed name certificates here in the States. And are you are just talking about basically doing a legal name change so your birth certificate is different than it was previously? Well, the, the assumed name certificate was uh, so that you could 
register the name as a name holder. So you're actually saying that you hold the name and then- Are you talking about becoming the creditor to your straw man? Is that what you mean? No, it's a little different. So it's almost like a, a fictitious business name. A lot of people, they do like an assumed business name and they do it in their own name. Oh, so, so they would make it say, say I want it to be Apple Incorporated as my personal name on my ID. You can call yourself whatever you want. Still, you know, yeah, how, you how, how this is done, you're, you're, um, you're capturing the birth name and then you're, um, and you're capturing it as a, a, a business name and you're, you are the name holder, but you're switching it around where you're, the name holder is the surname first and then the comma, and then um, your, your given name. So you're distinguishing it between one being a fiction and one being your actual real person owning it. What I'll just say is I'm not familiar with that process. I haven't done it that way because I have my own identity document Basically, the way I look at it, as soon as it's a legal document, it's a criminal fraud. I, I tolerate it because I have to, because they're the existing system. And if I want to do banking or anything, I have to interact with them. But I would almost gnaw my arm off and deal with them, like in any capacity. And this is where, once you have your own society, you create your own programs. And we all need to become the infrastructure to replace them, right? So anything they could do, we can be the Rockefellers, we can be the Carnegies, but you don't have to destroy anyone to do it. Right. Um, I, I guess I didn't exactly answer what you're saying. I just, that's not really my area of expertise. Um, my real thing is about keeping separate jurisdiction from the legal state. Um, I do have, like I said, the, the old ID and stuff, but I really, it, that's why I don't have a driver's license now. I'm never surrendering any jurisdiction of them, even getting their identity document. I will never do that again because I have my sovereign document. So I, the only one I might update would be my health card if I had to. Uh, but again, it would be with all rights reserved. And, um, on legal ID, they usually spell it in all caps. So if it's all capital, that's how you grammatically spell a bankrupt corporation. So that's the only thing I would say to check that process is if they, if you do the multiple name and, and what you're talking about, if it's in all capitals, they're still screwing you and you haven't actually differentiated anything because it's still the corporate status resembling and mirroring your private law rights, but you still haven't claimed them in private law because you're still using legal ID rather than your own under your own jurisdiction and society. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, I, I, again, I'm not sure if, if they're doing this in Canada or not, but a lot of people are also authenticating the birth certificate on the federal level. What is your opinion on that? Basically, you know, any value associated with the birth certificate is slavery money and generated from the, the brutal torture and, and, and genocide of, of history and man and womankind throughout history. So personally, like my position on that is they can shove it up their a-hole. Um, with the exception of getting my little tax rebate of a thousand bucks a year for, for my rent receipts, that's the only funding I accept in any way from the system anymore. And even that I have a little conflict on. I usually go a few years without doing it, but then there's a program that comes up they could use a couple grand, so I'll go do it for that. Um, but pretty much I would shoot these people in the face before I'd spit on them if I could get away with it. Like to all these, and I'm not, I'm not talking to people innocently enforcing that don't know. I'm talking about the, the Freemasons. And that's where all of these people that are using the corporate system deliberately with knowledge in a dictatorship fashion against all of us, None of us should have to deal with any of that legal crap. As soon as you go private law, you're, you have immunity from the legal system. You ha you're actually a diplomatic, you have diplomatic immunity as long as you don't cause harm. Um, so as soon as I figured out how to do that, I don't worry about the in the system stuff anymore. Um, just because it's a, I mean, just to learn legal code, like that's part of why Jackie, I respect you and the driving without license and being able to discharge yourself. I'm a sales guy where I just wanted the quickest answers possible to keep my ass out of jail and make sure I'd make a bunch of money and, and not fall prey to all this. Plus for me personally, when I was a teenager, I found Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill on audio. My real dad gave it to me. So I listened to that for about eight years on mastermind groups, how Andrew Carnegie sings, Rockefellers, all that. Um, and then my mom worked in insurance, so I got exposed to that too. So I just, when, when you really understand, you know, Hollywood's full of a bunch of pedophiles, you know, that Epstein guy, uh, Oprah, and, and a whole bunch of people are on, the, on that list. Um, I just, you know, the world's really run by a lot of evil people. And I didn't grow up overly religious. Like to me, someone worshiping Satan is stupid. 
<laughs> um, you know, never mind thinking if you eat a baby heart, that's going to make you live longer. But you have to realize there's really sick psychopathic people running stuff. So all I would say is use what you can to diminish the harm on yourself. You, like my advice is use the, our debt letter, get out of any debt. Right, right there, your debt's gone. So you don't have to worry about debt, minus maybe your property taxes and a mortgage payment, right? Just so they don't kick you out of your house. But everything else, credit card, debt, anything, whatever, as soon as you have your own society, your credit doesn't matter anymore because your society is your credit. So your credit rating is irrelevant, makes no difference. Uh, you want to open something corporate, open up a, a business or a holding company, a numbered account, something, you can do that too. But if that takes in money, uh, it may have to pay tax unless it's just accepting it on behalf of your society, right, as a gift, then that can always go through. But basically, just it's the answer to debt, it's the answer to making money. It gives you knowledge over your rights so you can protect your family, raise your kids so they understand. And it doesn't mean you're always going to be able to prevent being violated, but it means you know when you're being violated and you know what your options are. Even when I was violated eight years ago, it's not the most wanted. I spent 10 days in prison. Believe me, I'm jarred about that. I don't care if it's 15 years. I'm going to get all those people for that with bills and all of that. Um, but as, as someone, when you go through victimization, knowing you have a move and you have power takes about 80% of the sting out. So that, but, but again, for what you're talking about, I'm just really not familiar with, with that process. And I only elaborated because I want to understand, I, I get what you're talking about. My, my skew on it's just a little bit different. Oh, okay. So the, um, the, I, I know you said you did your own identity documents, but um, for, say for someone who has um, changed their name under common law by you. Yeah. Um, so when you're doing your identity document, you just, uh, how would you reference that? Or Basically what you do is you go back in, because to confirm identity, they're confirming who you were and who you are now. So bring all your legal ID, right? Uh, what I would recommend is actually use our template, pre-type it out. The template we did cost us, uh, it would have been 700, but she only charged us for half the time, so it was 350. Uh, but if you have the template pre-done, it's only 35 bucks. So what you would do is in our template, you would go through or get, get them to do it if you're comfortable paying the money. I'm just trying to save people money. Um, is uh, you would just reference all your old IDs you would reference your notice of understanding and intent and society founding documents and your society oath. And that being recorded from that moment on, you have your rights intact, even when you're continuing to use the legal system, but put all rights reserved beside your signature. And again, you don't even have to tell them you're doing it. It just makes it your technically correct in your contracting, but they don't even have to know you're doing it. Really for most people, when I go to the bank and I interact, it makes no difference to them what my status is and how I do it. You know, as long as I want to deal with that bank, I can't litigate them for fraud, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, as soon as I do, they're not going to, you know, deal with me anymore. So you, you make your friends where you make them. You, you fight the worst of what's out there. Become as independent as possible. And the other thing is, once you're a society with a lot of a certain commodity, you can back your own currency. You can do all of that yourself. Canadian Tire has Canadian Tire dollars. Like, if it's not a big deal. For our society, we use an honor credit right now uh but that could translate to physical currency later we'll figure it out as we go but but those moves i didn't want to make until we were globally as big as the existing system because when you start challenging your currency and stuff that's when they put you on a terrorist list and, and up the ante but again if you're just using this for financial planning they don't even know you exist they don't care lots of people have done this it's not a scary thing there's nothing bad to it um pretty much just on a financial thing i'm in the best shape i've ever been in in my life i i didn't come from money when we started this, I, when I first got into weed, I had 300 bucks. I had just lost my house. I was in an apartment without power. And I just gave my friends the one bedroom because they didn't have a home or whatever. So you can start off with nothing in this. And for most of the time I ran the society for the first four or five years, I had less than a thousand bucks at any given time. So you don't need to have a lot of cash. It helps, but, but yeah. Uh, with our programs though, you can make money with it all right away. So you won't have to struggle like that, but yeah. Turn back over to any other questions here. Um, I, I know he mentioned um, being able to pay off debt. What about student loans um, that are already existing? Yeah, you would just use the, the banking administrative process for debt to prove they're null and void and then threaten litigation and your fee schedule if they pursue it further. And oh, the, yeah. the, the letter to do that is in the documents I'll be sending to Jackie. And Jackie, you're welcome. With the group here, I, I don't care. You're welcome to share whatever. I think. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh. So, so, what, about, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what about if you have 
like if you need to pay for education, is there any way to do that? Um, uh, well, just with your own money. Again, if you, what's something you love in your own life right now that's pleasant? Nothing to do with sovereignty or craziness. What's something you do daily that you just love? Okay. No, no, like, like what's a hobby? Like, what, what do you, I'm asking you, what do, what do you do in your own time that you're passionate about? Q, tennis. What, what did you, what did you say? Something that I, that I like to do. Yeah, yeah, anything, like a hobby, anything you're passionate about. Like tennis. Tennis. Tennis, okay. So let's say you do your three letters, you open the I Love Tennis Society. <laughs> Okay, you do a monthly newsletter, who won what, what's going on, you have a cool, you know, maybe, maybe once a year, you know, someone wins a trip to go meet somebody that offers it for free just for publicity, you know, and let's say, let's say that's 25 bucks a month, you know, a thousand members, you got $25,000 a month, income tax free that you don't have to give a penny to anybody. You need to go pay for your education, right? Like that's, people are so used to credit and not having money. Like, like I'll, I'll tell you guys, honestly, in the marijuana industry, I earn two to 3%, two to 300% on my money every day, every day, boom, 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 fast as it can get out the door. I'm making crazy money. And, and once you have your rights intact, no one's taxing me, right? I don't have licensing fees for, for a dispensary in Canada. It's $250,000 for a license. I don't need one. I just saved a quarter mil. So once you do this and you don't get extorted by the system to exercise your lawful rights, you're a baller, you're rich, right? Like not just in money, but in all the other ways, but it does help with that. But yeah, you use the debt letter to get rid of debt. Uh, the only thing is uh, still pay your property tax or your mortgage if you're living there so they don't send people to your home. Um, and other than that, get rid of the debt and then just use your society to make money. And keep in mind, keep your job, whatever you're doing now, you don't have to quit that. Start your society. You could run it five hours a week to start. You know, you don't have to run it full time, especially if it was I love tennis, right? It's not too political or anything. So that, that's what I tell people. You can be political, but it, you're going to make a lot more if you just make it something fluffy that people love and then practice whatever you're about separate from that, right? Like, or not, infuse it, whatever. It just, it'll determine your market share. And that's the thing. Once you're the free market economy, the market will let you know how big or small you're going to get because you're not bound to a fixed market anymore. And that's where my problem with the legal system is it's all a fixed market. Prices are fixed. In Canada, they dump green. It's just, it's so much crap. So once you go free open market, it's just way better. All right. Okay. Thank you. And great questions, by the way. I love your questions. <laughs> Thanks. So, <laughs> so just so that you know, in terms of my signature, when I would get out of jail, I would sign as the authorized representative. In other words, I wasn't the person they were looking for. I was only the authorized representative. And as long as it's plain and ambiguous, they cannot, they, there's no liability attached. So it's pretty much the same thing as what you have because it, it, it lessens liability. It's under the terms of agency. So yeah. some sort of thing. All right then. So we are at three hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I thought it might go around there. So that's great. <laughs> Your throat is still sounding good, Thank but uh, but yes, it is definitely time for us to turn off the uh, the recording. Otherwise, it will take two days for it to render. For sure, but anyway, gotcha. I, I really appreciate having you. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing your documents, and and let's have a chat tomorrow or something. I I will be free tomorrow. It'd be good if you're available. Let's, yeah, give me a text when you when you wake up. I'm I'm kind of an early bird, so I'll be going to bed right now. But I you know I'd love to chat with you in the morning if you're up. <laughs> for sure. I'm two hours ahead of you. What time was good for you? Um, I get up usually around six or seven. So. Okay. Um, if I give you a call around 10, would that be okay in your time? Sounds great. All right. Fabulous. Beautiful. All right. Oh, wow. Is that awesome having you? I'm really looking forward to working with you. And I think there's been quite a few little people, little notes that I've had from people that said that they're excited. So I will chat with you tomorrow morning. Beautiful. And I just want to say, Jackie, you're one of my heroes going forward. I really am impressed with your work. I, <laughs> I legitimately was nervous coming on um, and, and I tried to bring in my A-game. So I just thank you. And uh, thank you for all the people on here who are listening and, and involved and, and care. And you guys are the frontline heroes. Because without all Thank you, brother. You can know I, I have a great group, actually. Well, we, we, ha we have a great group. I'm definitely an I <laughs> Well, All right. you guys are officially my homies, so we'll get to know each other more, and yes. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll get great. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie, right. Jackie, before you sign off, 
I, I want to ask you a question. Remember the California Business Code that says about the signature being yes. absolutely unambiguously to identify yourself not as the principal. Remember exactly. what the code was? Yeah, no, I can't, but I, I, that's what I wrote to you. I was trying to look for that myself too. Yeah, I can't remember where I stored it, but it says very succinctly there, man, that's it's the worst thing to do. Unambiguous when you do it. And you do, so I know someone that just went to prison for being the principal. He didn't actually do anything wrong, but he didn't correct the wrongdoing that was going on. And so he was um, put in prison as the principal. So you, Yeah, because the principal is liable. They're liable. Yeah. You, you want to be the, the agent that isn't liable. <laughs> That's exactly right. The only thing I'll point out is once you go private law, you're under full liability always. So once there you is go full liability, liability always. always. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the way we like it. All right. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank you. Have right. a good, good night. Thank you very much, Marcel. All right. Thank Bye. you.